Yo, what's good, world? I think we're on episode 72. Here we are. We are back. How's it going? Welcome to my world. It's good to be in your world, I think. I don't know. What are you doing? How are you feeling? How's your Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or whatever day of the week it is? How are you? Tell me. How do you feel? Talk to this recording as if I'm in the room. Just kidding, guys. Um, but yeah, this is episode 72. You know what's up. You know what's good. You know who you're listening to. I'm the dude. I'm the dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Just playing this Tropic Thunder. Tropic Downey Jr. It's the last man to pull off blackface in a tasteful way, in a tasteful manner. And I respect it. Respect it a lot. But hey, guys, you know who the, you know who the, uh, Sponsors the podcast are Dragster Tubes. Go to DragsterTubes.com. Paparosa. Paparosa. Telescopic tubes. Convenient. Easy. Pre-rolled. Cones. Stuff them up. Smoke them out. You know how it goes. DragsterTubes.com. No third lane. Dot com. They make shirts. They make hoodies. They make beanies. They make hats. They make all kinds of shit. Lifestyle brand. Check them out. At Olympic, Texas. Killing the game. No third lane.com. They made our t-shirts. And we got more t-shirts on the way. Buy some more t-shirts. Because I've spent money on that shit. And y'all ain't buying it. I need to stop drinking before I record my intros. You're right. I apologize. Um, <laughs> who else? Who else we got? Um, spitefully Spicy. Instagram.com slash Spitefully Spicy. Mango Habanero. Italian Scorpion Pepper. Um, blueberry. Ghost pepper, all the good shit, hatch green chili, put it on anything, salsa, it's the bomb, spitefully spicy, salsa, made here, locally, go to Instagram, check him out, DM the man, he's a killer, he's a comedian, he's hilarious, he makes good salsa, it goes on earthing, those are my three sponsors, I got them out the way quick, because I feel like I do this every time, and it's like, I only got three sponsors, it's really not even worth mentioning, because they ain't giving me money. You know, I'm just out here trying to be cool, and it's not even working. So, appreciate y'all for listening. Just got back from a podcast. Not a podcast. Just got back from an open mic at MJ's. New open mic at MJ's. Um, it was kind of rough starting out. Yeah, it was kind of rough the whole time. Had some fans, though. Had a new guy come up. Had a couple hecklers, a drunk lady. She was cool, though. She bought me some shots afterwards. So, overall, good night, you know. Um, MJ's is going well. We're We're starting some new open mics in Amarillo. Hope to see you there. If not, you know catch me online catch me on the podcast um but anyway had a good friend uh black sheep come on i'll play him on the intro i played his song on the outro as well um he's been on the podcast twice already he's a good friend of mine we went to high school together and uh we've just been you know homies for a while and we had a really good talk it started out with music but it kind of traveled on we talked about politics we talked about a lot of stuff and uh just two dudes you know chilling kicking back catching up and it was a great podcast, great time, you know, lols, you know. Um, it's it's good to have someone you know really well on the podcast, you know. Because, uh, I don't know, you have some people on you don't know that well and they don't talk too much. But when you have a good friend on, it just kind of goes and it just flows. Like the last two podcasts, I feel like have been really good. Maybe the last, like, three, um, for sure. So, um, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, he's got a lot of new music coming out. Check him out. Follow the man. He's got a lot of music, a lot of great music. And uh, we talked a lot. We talked about uh, this guy's got a very similar mindset to me in terms of, like, work ethic and, and everything like that. And it was just it was interesting to hear that because I feel like comedy and uh, music, specifically hip-hop music, kind of um, coexist in a lot of ways. They kind of cross paths in terms of, like, creativity um, and just work ethic, things like that, like, there's really no limits, you know, you just gotta work, put the work in, and, uh, me and this dude are just, you know, both trying to grind, you know, both out in the middle of nowhere, trying to make something work, trying to make something pop, so, um, thank you for listening, this is a really great episode, and I'm gonna go ahead and play the intro, let's see, Letter to God will be the one we'll play at the end, um, but just check this dude out on SoundCloud. I'll drop a link. It's three L A C K S H E E P. So the it's black sheep, but the three works like a B, you know. So, but anyway, this song is called 
fuck you. And I love it. I played it before, so you'll recognize it if you heard it in my past episodes. I'm a big fan of this dude. He's awesome. He's one of the best rappers in Amarillo. And uh, he's also a good friend of mine, so it works out, you know? It's cool. It's real cool. And uh, by the way, I was on a podcast recently, Primate, Panhandle Primate Podcast. Go to panhandleprimatepodcast.com. This dude has a blog. He's a firefighter. He's a really awesome guy. Uh, I just met him the other day. We follow each other on Instagram. But he's got another podcast, and I was a guest on it. And we had a great time. I'll, I might drop a link to that one here. Or, um, you know, just go to panhandleprimatepodcast.com. This dude's he's got a ton of good interviews. Um, he's had a lot of good people on there. He's a really interesting guy. So check him out for sure. And uh, as always, thank you for listening. Follow your dreams. Um... Happy Black History Month. Fuck you. 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 How you snitch on some shit that I ain't never take You gave addresses and plates to every place that I stay Due to like kind of like mesh my voice into the beat a little better Cause it was, it sounded funny when I recorded it anyway But I was like oh I can fix it cause the words were good I fucked mm. up the words but By the time I got done I wasn't smart enough to get, to mess with it enough To get it to where I liked it And I was like really picky about it too So I was just uh, like I'll leave those off And then I made a couple other ones I still wouldn't. I'm still not super proud of everything on there, but I just wanted to get like the project out and get it out of the way for sure. Because it was a pain in my ass for like three months. That's kind of that's kind of my mentality. Like I'm not super proud of all the shit I'm putting out, but I'm just putting it out. You just got to get it out, <laughs> yeah. get it out. That was me. I sat there and I was like, I want this to be perfect, and then it drove me nuts for like probably. 60 straight days like i was just like i would go in there and be pissed off like mm -hmm. i went in there every single day trying to make something happen i'd be going in there with a bad attitude and finally i was like you know what i quit being a baby and just put put what i got out mm -hmm. pick the ones i actually do like put them out and just say whatever and then move on and then i made that letter to god single right after that and i'm i like it way better than i like anything on the tape and i was really? like good i just needed to get that tape out of the way and keep making so there's, music there's a lot of songs we like i mean of course i already knew like i think three of them were yeah already yep out but jerry's that, record store i like that one a lot yep and that was that one when i that was one of the first ones i recorded after i recorded zz rolling peace and a couple other ones like have you heard some cut that's like an old one it's like what it is yo what's mm -hmm. up I did one on that beat, and I liked them all. It's just like, one, it was really when I made Jerry's record store. I liked that one so much, it really kind of put a sour taste in my mouth about the other ones, and I didn't like the, how they matched up with it on a track list. And I was, I wanted to make some other ones. So, what's a uh, ZZ? Is that like a? Uh, it's a Kodak song. Kodak, Travis Scott. Oh yeah, I've heard that one. It like it, the beat started out where he it went viral on a video. He's in the studio, kind of dancing to it, and. Then he dropped it as a single and then put it on his album. Kodak. Do you oh, listen yeah. to his al his new album? I I'm, haven't. I know you're not a big Kodak fan, but I love no, that album. I'm, I'm becoming a big Kodak fan. Man, he's getting better. I, that album really impressed me. I think what artists I don't like initially, once I like see them like interview, once I see them on The Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. and I get to like know them in yeah, a sense. Yeah, that I'm helps like, okay, me too. I fuck with them. Yeah. Like 21 Savage, that helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Kodak, that helped me a lot. Killer Mike, honestly, I'm, yeah, I've listened to some Killer Mike interviews lately, and I was like, dude, I'm a huge fan of him. Like, yeah, I he's went outspoken. Back and to his music, his music's dope too. Yep. Oh yeah, he's an OG too. He's been around. Hell yeah, Killer Mike's cool. Yeah,
I realize I didn't really know dude that well. <laughs> Have you listened to Run the Jewels? Uh-uh. It's like him and a guy named LP. It's like super hype hip hop. Yeah. Like energy. Like shit you would work out to. Is it like is it like uh some new stuff he's doing or like is it older? Yeah, they've been doing it probably I don't know when the last album was, probably like twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. Yeah. But they've released like two or three albums under that name. Cool. What is it again? Run the Jewels. Run the Jewels. R T J. Cool. Yeah, man, but that Kodak album. I've been replaying the shit out of that. What's it called? Uh Dying to Live. I almost forgot what it was called. I need to look it Dying up. Dying to Live. It's a good one. <laughs> the Twenty One Savage album was good. Yeah, it was. I'm bad. Like I'll, if there's an album that comes out that I like, it's literally all I'll listen to for a good like month and a half, two months. That's what I miss about buying CDs. Mm-hmm. Because I would just put that shit in for I, months. I, I think that's why I do it. Because I used to be a CD guy and I had the one disc. I didn't have like mm-hmm. the. The little changer, so I just put yeah. one CD in, and that stayed in there, and I ran through the tracks all the time. I remember Good Kid, Mad City. That, yep, I've that's never, the one that comes to mind. Never left my CD Oh, older. my gosh, man. <laughs> How can you stop listening to that? It's still good. Yeah. I, was, I listened to that a thousand times, and it's amazing. It's incredible. That It was funny. I did, I've probably said this a thousand times, but I didn't even like Kendrick before that. Like, I didn't like his really? voice. I wasn't paying attention. See, yeah. a lot of people were turned off to his voice, because I yeah. remember people telling me, hey, don't play that Kendrick Lamar shit. He sounds like shit. Yeah, I was I, like, you guys are retarded. <laughs> man, for real. He used to come up on my Pandora and it, when it was Section 80, yeah. and I would hear his voice and like be like, nope, Skip. Like On Pandora, he was always, you know, Skips mm-hmm. are valuable on Pandora, yeah. so I, I was using a Skip on Kendrick, and then I finally started paying attention. I would listen to the song. Yeah. After Good Kid, Mad City, I went back, and I was like, oh, I'm stupid. Mm. Like, dude, <laughs> dude's good. <laughs> I think every, it's happened with everybody. Oh, uh, yeah. Chance the Rapper. People thought he sounded yeah. weird when he first came up. Mm-hmm. And then, Man, acid rap. Wow. That was, I <laughs> fell in love with that shit. Yeah, that's still my favorite. Yeah, man. He's still making great music, but have you seen the, the like the post Grammy interview after the coloring book? I forget. It's this I probably did. I know the dude who interviewed him. From a couple think. years ago? Yeah. I probably saw that. And he's showing like some some like unedited versions and like shit Kanye took off of his album. Like like Chance made waves or whatever. Mm-hmm. made like a version oh, yeah. for Kanye and he took that off of there like with some big choirs in it I don't know why they never released that version I bet just Kanye yeah Kanye being Kanye Kanye be doing that shit he probably will eventually just cause that video's kinda popping around right, like right now it's getting viral yeah that when he put the choir in there was mm-hmm. like, yeah hey, uh, yeah <laughs> it was funny to me cause I was sitting there thinking like man they had all these people they had this big choir or a couple, mm-hmm. he said he had a couple choirs. Yeah, and then we make this big day full of choirs. That yeah. would be bad. Big day full of big choirs, and then we just don't use it. Like big day of work, and then we, <laughs> we've got enough money and enough resources, we can just like put that one on the back burner. Yeah, that's crazy. It's quite. It's cr- imagine being in the choir and be like, "I'm going to be on Kanye's album." I know, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> oh, spending the whole day with Chance and their director. <laughs> Oh man, and then get all excited, tell your parents, tell everybody, yeah. and then you, you're not, you don't even end up on it. We didn't even hear you on there. Where were you? <laughs> there was a lot of choirs on the album, though, so maybe they made one of those choirs. But maybe so. Who knows? That would be sad. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit happens. See, like Kanye is a perfectionist, obviously, because yeah. he's supposed to drop an album last october oh and he and he was like never mind november and i haven't heard shit <laughs> i know <laughs> like not even any talk about it either yeah i think uh, he, he said something like he did a concert with cuddy one night and he was like tonight's show i don't remember where it was tonight's show made me realize that yandi isn't ready yeah i need to go to africa <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah man i never you can't ever know what's going through that guy's head yeah but i'd I dig the music, so I don't even say nothing. Yeah, same. I think he's waiting to go on Rogan's podcast so he can go off I was on gonna, some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I figured he'd probably do it closer to the album. Yeah, I think it's what he's waiting for. Yeah. Because I've heard Rogan talk about it, and he's like, yeah, we're... That's going to be an He's going to do it. Like, he's like, we've we've had several conversations. I think he just wants to get to know me more. That conversation will be interesting. Super interesting. Those are two brains that will be funny in the same <laughs> room. <laughs> Absolutely. Be crazy. But yeah, uh, going back to Kanye, uh, did you see the recent video with him freestyling with like this white producer and Dame Dash in a little bedroom studio? 
Is it an old video? No, I think it's fairly new, but like I follow the guy on Instagram. His name's Cavelli. I follow him on Instagram and I followed him before this, but he started posting this video of Kanye freestyling to like a beat. Mm -hmm. And so like everybody online was talking about like, Oh, that Kanye beats awesome. Da, 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 da. But then it actually was Cavelli's beat. Mm -hmm. And so like, he's kind of, he's kind of getting some buzz right now because oh, pe yeah. people thought it was Kanye's beat. And, but I mean, this guy posts it like 10 times a day though. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, man, like we saw it. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of pages are posting it, but it was cool. It was cool how he got that opportunity. He was just like in that room for a few minutes and you get Kanye on video rapping on your beat. Things are yeah, real crazy. That's wild. Yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, I'm wondering when Kanye's going to have his music come out. Me too, man. Cuddy's supposed to drop another one this year. Really? Yeah. Good. It's what he's talking like he is. Good. Which is exciting. Cuddy. I feel like those guys just need to keep making music oh, until they please die. Please don't stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please don't stop. Because, like,. Like, Cuddy's library, a lot of people don't fuck with Cuddy just because they haven't, you know, it was another one of those things, they don't really pay attention to who Cuddy is and mm -hmm. and then go listen to his music. You really kind of got to know who Kid Cuddy is. Yeah. And I think some of the music turned people off because it was so different. And it did on me on a couple albums, I'll admit, but... I didn't I didn't I like always, his rock album. No, yeah. It's other just, than that, I liked, I liked everything yeah. else. But I, I like his exploration, though. I like how he's willing to do it. Yeah. Like if you can get in the studio professionally, and you, you, I mean, you can come up with a studio album. I guess like anybody can go in there after your kid Cuddy, but I don't know. Even Lil Wayne like made some rock stuff that was like, eh, but it was still yeah. like it was, it was logical music. It wasn't like, horrible. Yeah, you could like <laughs> you could hear the logic in the music. Like it was if they can do that and they're multifaceted. I think that's cool. It is impressive. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's what's cool about hip hop artists, man. Hip hop's so versatile. Like it's came from like disco records all the way to what we're doing now. Like absolutely, it's it's got influence from everywhere. Oh yeah, and that's what that's the cool part about hip hop is like anything can stick to it, and it can stick to anything. Mm -hmm. Like it's really malleable. Yeah, no limits, no boundaries. Yep. I feel like uh, rock music's kind of like fallen behind, at least like the mainstream rock music. Just yeah, you like just don't have the classics like you used to. They're just they're following a formula, and, and there's there's really great bands like Black Keys and stuff. There's always exceptions, but yeah. like for the most part, it's just like they're regurgitating the same shit. Mm -hmm. And I think like the classic era of rock, like like I don't know, I think of like Led Zeppelin and like ZZ Top and all those guys. Like back in that era, like when rock was the only genre. Yeah, and I think like that that music was so authentic and it and it stuck with everybody so hard it's really hard to top that within the genre mm -hmm. and i mean i don't want to say that because i don't know a whole lot about rock but it's like i think after everybody killed it for about 20 years it was just like how do you kill it any better than that and it was I such a big part of american culture at that mm -hmm. time and right now hip-hop's a huge part of american culture even yeah bigger or as big as rock and roll like it's kind of like the new rock and roll that's come in and taken over the throne i feel like that's true yeah and then uh hip-hop i feel like it's just easier you know because all you need is yourself yeah you go make a beat on. oh line. it totally is yeah. i've always <laughs> said that like i see people like on any type of strings or keys or like yeah. instrumentation at all mm -hmm. Like, you see rappers that can play instruments, it gives me way more respect for them because it's like, that's way harder. Like, anybody can get a microphone, a computer, a software, go get a beat off of YouTube and put words on it. But, like, the talent comes into play with, like, wordplay and flow. But, like, other than that, like, I don't know, like, musical understanding, you can make a hip-hop record pretty easy. Whether it'll be good or not, that's another thing. Yeah, but that's true. the concept is a lot simpler. But that's why I like people like Tyler the Creator, like his Flower Boy album. Like I that concept that, that concept was kind of abstract. It mm -hmm. was a little different. I, I like when I hear like instrumentation and rap music. Tyler's an artist. In he like, is. In like every sense of the word. Yeah, he just... It's incredible. The way... <laughs> from All the way from Goblin to Flower Boy, like the transition's uh, crazy. And just like the... Any of his music videos, just the colors he uses, you're just like, God damn. Yeah. This dude is crazy. Yeah, his, <laughs> his visuals are are probably some of the best i Blows think mind. have you seen some of the new videos where they're editing editing it to where it's people dancing but they have like glowing animations like as they dance like as it hits like there'll be like neon lights fl pop up on their hands like, like, a, like at a rave party because i've seen those gloves that light up is that what you're talking about it's not gloves though it's kind of the same yeah it's kind of the same idea <laughs> but it's like it's cgi like 
I think it's Blotter Productions is what they're called. I don't think I've seen it. Man, it's those are some cool videos. Uh, a lot of dance studios use them. Like it's, and I didn't realize. Like I saw a behind the scenes video there. They have big camera crews for it. It's not just like a little camera and then they edit it. Like they have, a, it's like a big old music video production and then they animate it to where like you have animations like that hit with the dance and it's it's dope. Oh yeah, Blotter Productions videos. Those are Blotter. Blotter, yeah. B l o t t e r. Mm-hmm. I right think. Down. If I remember right. Blotter Productions, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I always wonder if I'm, how much of Instagram world I'm missing, too, because all I follow is, like, hip-hop Instagram. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I get it in my head, like, oh, hip-hop's taking over the world, and it's like, no, nah, it's just taking over my world. Like, it's, <laughs> it, that's the only thing I follow, you know what I mean? Yeah, Instagram's cool like that. Yeah, like, it's it's definitely, like, has its little niches where everybody kind of stays within the dope. same hashtags. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about people, like, seeing their suggestions. It's like, I only follow this thing, I only follow this thing. Yeah. I just see a bunch of, like, fitness models. So yeah. Like, <laughs> I guess I'm the perv of Instagram. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> That's my cra- bad. <laughs> That's crazy because, like, I'll be on Snapchat and, like, the first one will be, like, just a girl, I guess, who's famous mm-hmm. for being on social media. Yeah. And it'll, like, that'll, that'll be the first, like... I guess featured story at the top. I'm like, so like, do y'all know I'm a boy? Like, or like, <laughs> do I click on girl stuff a lot? Like, the Snapchat news is weird. It is weird, man. <laughs> it always makes me think about like little junior high and elementary kids that have Snapchat. Yeah, because that's who they're catering to, right? <laughs> that's what they're going for. Seriously, <laughs> the shit I see on there is like, no, man. There's got to be a safe search on this thing. That is crazy. Snapchat's crazy. Snapchat's gotten crazy from what it was like when we were in high school. Yeah. It's crazy how it's evolved. I didn't think Instagram stories would take off the way they have, but their Instagram might be bigger than Snapchat right now. I, I don't even have Instagram when they were talking about the stories, but I always talk shit on it because I was like, there's no way too. that's going to work. Yeah, I was like, it's, no one's going to use that, and now but, everybody uses it. But to be honest, I, I post stories, but I don't really look at stories. Like, there, there's a handful of stories I look at of, like, yeah, people. Same. Like, I look at your story, quite, like, some of the most, and then there's some track people I look at their story. But, like, I don't really look at stories. I always I end up scrolling. And that mm. scroll is deadly, man. Yeah, I've started doing that with Snapchat now because I added too many people on Snapchat. Yeah. It's like, I'm tired of looking at y'all. And people that put up concerts, no one wants oh, to hear your shit at a concert. Fuck you. I, I've unfollowed so many people. It doesn't sound as good <laughs> on a Snapchat. All you do is hear their voice and they're off key every time. Yep. <laughs> or the person next to them. Yeah. Or, yep. Yeah. So I only got five minutes of it. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that shit. I know my sister. She I forgot what concert she was at a while back, but she she sent me a good two hundred snaps of mm-hmm. this concert. I finally said stop, <laughs> but she was videoing so much she didn't even see my message that said stop, and she just kept going. And I was like, "Did you even watch the concert? Like, it's like you're freaking out. For you want to document all of this? I bet you didn't save one of those videos, <laughs> but you felt like you had to save everything." I forgot. I think it was Dimitri Martin. He's a stand-up comedian. He was like, it's weird people are recording this or recording uh, concerts on their phone. Like, I like it live, but I want to watch it later on a tiny screen. Right. It's like, <laughs> There's with one... people's heads in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer it that way. Right. There's one concert video that's hilarious. Um, we were at the Kid Cudi concert, and I was with a buddy, and he, had, he was lighting up next to me, and security... F- puts a flashlight on him Mm -hmm. and i was videotaping the whole thing and you just see this light come across and hit him and he's like (laughs) it was the it was about as funny as a concert video could get but it was just funny because the security was standing right next to him he Mm -hmm. didn't even see him we got spotlighted but we're in colorado so it's okay yeah like what what were they gonna do did they even give a shit they just they pretty much they're hired to say no and then walk away Mm. makes sense yeah that's all it was I forgot. It's like it's like a famous. Th- it's like a famous theater. <laughs> Break the mic. I know. It's like a famous theater in uh, uh, Denver. I forgot what it's called though. Something ballroom, I think, right? Yeah, something like that. And I, I know. I know what you're talking about. I went to. Uh, I saw Cuddy in. What's that place called? The Red Rocks. I always talk about Red Rocks. I'm like it's the coolest concert ever, but it's really it's the only concert I've been to. I really did break it. No, you just gotta. You just gotta it's tighten this it. part though. <laughs> oh that should be okay i think all right word we can i can pause it and fix it <laughs> it's good but it's uh it's good as long as it doesn't fall i won't feel bad 
But yeah, we snuck in like nine joints and into the concert. That's that's kind of an open amphitheater type yeah. deal, isn't it? So yeah, no one really cared. Yeah. But then I went to uh, see Logic and G Easy in Dallas, and nobody was smoking weed there. I was like, this place is work. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. I've always wanted that because sadly Kid Cudi's the only concert I've ever been to. But I've always wanted like if you're in a Texas concert, like even is a Wiz Khalifa concert in Texas, is it like smoked out like crazy? I feel like it should be, but maybe I don't know. I mean, other than Austin, like Austin would definitely be smoked out. But like if you went to like Dallas, yeah, would it be smoked out Wiz Khalifa concert? It's a good question. Be dangerous. Be interesting. Yep. I feel like the guards would have the same mentality, just like. Don't smoke weed. Ha <laughs> Just kidding. We know why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> we know why you're here. I don't know. Probably gets... I need to go to more concerts. I do too. When's your next concert? Shit. Yeah, I need I need to just like start experimenting live though, honestly. I've never even come close to doing something like that. Go to the 806 Wednesday. For open mics? Yeah. I've thought about it. There's a bunch of trash ass rappers that come through. So. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll do better than all of them. No, I need to. I need to jump in with the trash ass rappers. At least they're coming out there and putting it out there. <laughs> no, I'll there's it, actually there's actually there's a couple. Yeah, good, good dudes up there. Yeah, man, I I'm just so bad because as soon as I get done with my day and like the shit you got to do like to pay the rent and whatnot, like yeah. I'm such a fiend to like get in the studio, mm. and even if I'm not in the studio at that moment, like I need the studio like next to me for mm. like if I have ideas because like I have ideas yeah. coming to me. I'm on YouTube and on the internet like crazy. I have mm. a bunch of producers that follow me that like they send me beats or I'll look at their page for beats and like mm. if I find a beat I like I want to be close by like yeah. I always hate letting thoughts like get away from me cuz I have I, that same issue. I, I always keep a pad on me. Yeah, and I <laughs> I have like this big like stress about like if I have an idea, I'm never going to have it again, which is probably mm. isn't true. That's yeah, probably but not just, true, but I, it's, I feel that it's part time. of my makeup. I'm just like, dang, I got to go get this down. I got to get it ready to go this, you know. I'm the exact same way. Like I always I'm always in like a creative mode. Me too. In a writing like, mode and I can't get out of it. I know. And it's gotten to the point to where I feel like I'm becoming like a bad friend. Right, because like I don't want to hang out with people. Like bro, I, could, I could be, I could be doing something productive right now instead of just chilling on your couch. And I, I get, <laughs> that I'm the same exact way. I'm always like, man, so and so wants me to come over. It's like I, I love them and I want to see them, but man, I just need to be right here. Like this is where yeah, I need to be. Hundred percent. Like when I, when I can have some free time. Like I don't know when that day will be because it's hard. Like it's hard to satisfy me. Mm-hmm. Like I want. Like you always think you always think of like your dreams and when you'll be satisfied with yeah. them. But it's like, I know, Never. The t- I know the type of person I am. And it's just like, if I get to this level, I'm going to know I belong at the next level. And mm-hmm. so especially sitting down here at the bottom, it's like, I need to be in the freaking studio every day. Even if I'm just in there, like watching some Ted talks on some informative shit, yeah. like, cause I, and that, then I get in trouble. Cause you know, I'm in the studio every day or at work. Not, you come home, same routine every day. Like, you haven't experienced a whole lot, so it's like, what do you write about? How do you be creative when you go through the same routine? You know what I That's mean? That's true too. You gotta, you gotta have some things happen to you, and like, yeah. trying to get to where I go out a little more and like, kind of relax a little bit, take my mind off of creativity. Because there's sometimes like I feel like I'm trying to write so many lyrics that my shit comes out like just like trying to write lyrics. You know what I mean? Like yeah. forcing a bar out, like mm-hmm. just because we gotta finish this song this weekend, like. I just get I get in my head and like yeah. try to push myself a little too hard. I yeah. guess I don't even know if that exists, but it's like I definitely need to kick back and let my brain calm down from do like th- the words. Do you think it stifles the 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 lyrics or the overall quality if you're if you're pushing too hard? Totally. That's I think that's what happened on the mixtape too. That's why I was like by the time January came around, I was really upset with a lot of those songs because I was like, man, like I was on a roll with them. I had a good flow going, but I pressed like the last half of them or the first half of like mm-hmm. I pressed a little bit and probably try to squeeze a little too much quality out of it. Like, and I'm not a sound engineer or producer. So like, it's like kind of hit and miss with me. I'm trying to figure things out. So I think like, Oh, I can, you know, take that little top end out of my voice and bring it down into the beat a little more. And then I realized like, I, I don't know how to do that on certain, in certain levels of like EQ and shit. Like I like, mm-hmm. I just know the basics. And so, when I'm trying to press and I'm trying to be like super, I don't know, uh, picky, I guess, like just trying to make everything perfect. Like mm-hmm. I get in my head and then it's like, 
why are you even being picky like you're making this to where it's not fun like mm -hmm. you're making it to where you're pissed off in here like i got a punching bag in my studio so oh, yeah <laughs> so that's I can awesome just go to town and uh but yeah man sometimes it definitely stifles the creativity just trying to push and like trying i just i'm super i get caught up like i want to be successful really bad mm -hmm. but i also like Part of one of being successful is just because I I want to have the means to be able to do this for a long time. Like just because I really like to do it, I've always liked to rap, even if it wasn't in the studio. But like mm -hmm. as soon as I, like I got in the studio, like in high school, like I loved it. Oh yeah. And like I was trying to play ball in between, and then once I got in baseball, like I was still thinking about rap. Like that's what I really wanted to do. And now that like I have the studio, I have the room, and I've spent so much money on it. It's like. I want it to go, go, go and be there forever. But sometimes, like, you trying to, like, weigh your mind down with, like, trying to be as good as you can be. It's like you lose your patience. So, like, you got to, like. That's true. You got to find a balance. You know? Yeah. Unplug every once in a while. Oh, yeah. But that's I, also. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to turn it off. I really don't. <laughs> me neither. That's my problem, man. <laughs> I didn't master that. And I feel bad because, I, like, I live with my girlfriend, so it's, like. I always tell her, like, I'm sorry, like, even when I'm home, you don't see me. Like, <laughs> I'm in yeah. here, like, doing my shit. And, like, even when I'm out of that room, I'm outside mm -hmm. thinking about that room, thinking about words, thinking yeah. about beats, thinking about how many songs, like, I want to do in that week. Or, like, I have two songs that are halfway done. Do I want to finish them right now? Or, like, no, like, I need to change the vibes up. I don't need to go in there and force it, like, while mm -hmm. I'm pissed off, like it's a happy song go in there when you're happy mm -hmm. like i did i have so many like mental battles that i go through but it's all just yeah. because like i i like i'm super passionate about the music that's I really, badass i really want it to be good i really want it to be mm -hmm. quality even though like i'm at the level i know that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen like all the time consistently i just gotta put my shit out yeah get a song out. out of the way start the next one like put it out there i feel like i get better every song or learn even if it's not a better song like i learn something new every song so it's like Definitely. the more songs i can do the more repetitions it's like lifting weights like i can get another rep yeah. in the next time you're working that muscle yeah that's what's important yeah see i i relate to that so much the only time like i really go out and do stuff is that i'm like oh will this be an opportunity to become you know some material in the future i think it's really <laughs> dude <laughs> but, i'm so glad that's, you that's said my, that that's always my mindset like we'll go we'll go out of town we'll go to a city or something and i'll be mad that I'm away from the studio, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to have some things happen to me yeah. that I can write about. Mm -hmm. Like I went to Arizona a while back for a buddy's bachelor party and I got a song out of it. Like yeah. I wrote a song about some weird chick that we met at the bar and, uh, or really it was at the, at a restaurant for breakfast, but what's that song it, called? Hi. Have I heard that one? Yeah. It's, it, uh -huh. I may have taken it off, but I think it's on there. Uh -huh. I, I know there's a song where you're rapping about a, a woman who's like trying to get with you. Yes. Is that the one? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and she was not a favorable woman. Don't think she was some <laughs> jet setter. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, like, so I always, I always go out thinking like, man, like something's going to happen to me. I'm going to get some lyrics out of it. This is going to be good. Like mm -hmm. experience is good. But then when you're sitting there just like, <laughs> like looking for lyrics everywhere you go, like there, it's not going to happen organically like that. But I just get caught up in the. And the creative part of it, like you said, I'm just, I can never turn it off. <laughs> I'm always wanting to figure something out. But yeah, I went to a, a bachelor party yesterday. Shout out Diego. But um, Diego, for yeah. real? Hell but yeah. yeah, I was just sitting there like, man, I could be, I could be thinking of some material right uh -huh. now. Like I could be, yep. I could be listening to a podcast. I could be at the gym. You know, there's <laughs> man. That makes me feel so good that you say that because I, <laughs> I always think like, man, is this gonna consume me? Like, fuck, like this is all I think about. Yeah, it's all. I it's think like about. A, I think about that too. It's like, I don't. I'm not gonna make time for a relationship. Like, yeah. unless, unless a woman just comes and she's yeah. she's gonna have to chase me. Yeah, because like I'm not she, doing. She's shit. gonna have to be cool <laughs> with me being busy and like. Yeah. Me. That's and that's like why well, I feel so blessed to have Alexa because it's like, like I said, I never see her even if I'm home. Like. But she's the coolest. Like she'll bring dinner in the studio real That's quick. Awesome. Like she just, she she wants it just as bad as I do for me. Mm -hmm. Like because she knows that I'm I'm big on this. That's what you need. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's definitely a keeper. Cause if I lose her, I ain't gonna find nobody that's gonna be cool with this type yeah. of person. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And I don't. Right now, I'm not trying to make time for anyone else, which I'm super selfish right now, but I feel like it's, See, man, I it's feel what I need so to do. See, man, I'm so selfish, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because it's like, well, I've got 
try to make plans with people. I'm like, oh, I've got an open mic that day. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll do some Sunday. Oh, I've got three podcasts and an open mic that day. Yeah. It's like, oh, I've got a show that Thursday. I like, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't not, I can't put that, bo- I can't put anything else in front of that. Yeah. And it's, and it's to me like, yeah, that's, it's my first priority. So I'll sit there and want, and one side of my brain being happy and proud of myself for, you know, having that drive, having that motivation and really actually being about it. But then on the other side, like you have, like I, in my brain, I have like this thing that's like, damn, like, Am I going to look back and be like, damn, dude, you let that shit consume the hell out of you and like it stifled your creativity. You couldn't even think straight because like you weren't allowing yourself to live a little. Mm-hmm. But like the other side's way too powerful to even like. I agree. That's like a little seed of doubt in there that I feel like everybody has. Yeah. And it's always like, a man, should I be doing this? And it's like, shit, yeah. Like, what else but, am I going to do? Yeah, I mean, you need something in your life yeah. that sets you on fire. But Otherwise, you're just going to be a, sitting a at, shell of yourself. I can't think, I can't even fathom going home and, not, and you know, putting on Netflix first thing and, like, or putting on Fortnite first thing, like, yeah. playing a video game or watching TV, like, first thing when I get home, like, not working, not, like, trying to, like, I bitch so much about my goals and, like, wanting to get somewhere. If I bitch this much, like, and then I'm going to go home and sit down mm-hmm. and chill, like, yeah, I'd feel so guilty. Like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine like working the nine to five and then coming home and just kicking my feet back. Like, I'm sure that feels good. Oh, that would suck. Yeah, I'm sure it feels good in some worlds, but like not mine. Like, not mine. Yeah, like every every time I'm doing something, I'm just like I could be, I could be doing something way way better. You know, like every yeah. time I'm watching Netflix, like yeah. I'll watch I'll watch some stand up specials, and I use that as like you know studying. Yeah, I enjoy it, but. No, uh, there's there's informative stuff out yeah. there. Like, there's definitely stuff that helps me too. Like, Netflix is full of like hip hop history on there mm-hmm. too, and like I love the hip hop history stuff. It's awesome, and it's it's funny. Even when I'm watching that, I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, this is gonna make me a better rapper. And it's like not really. Like, you, this is just what you like. Like, this is what you love to hear yeah. about. Like, but I'm so caught up in the grind. It's like mm-hmm. sometimes I label it down to that. But even when I'm watching Netflix, man, I'm like. Is this information I can use? Have you seen the new like Will Smith Earth thing on there? I haven't. It's cool as shit. And I was sitting there like I was it's watching. It's like Planet Earth narrated by Will Smith. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. It's, and some astronauts too. But I was watching it and I was sitting there like, man, this is really cool. And I'm addicted to this. But it was like, this is wasting my fucking time. <laughs> like, I need to get in the studio because it was addicting, man. I I sat there and watched episode after episode after episode. I did that night. with Atlanta. Yeah, have you seen that show? I love Atlanta. It's incredible. I just finished season two. And I see. I, was, I haven't. I haven't gotten through season two. I was yet. upset that it was over. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's a great show. The show's hilarious. I love like the the quiet sense of humor on it. It's just like mm-hmm. low key. I love that shit. Yeah, it's different. It's interesting because like Donald Glover takes every chance to not make himself the center of attention. Yeah, when he's easily like the biggest actor on the show. Yep. I just. Yep. I respect that. It's cool. Dude, his his creativity is nuts. It really is. There's no boundaries to his creativity. When it comes to a music video, to music, all the way into directing a show. like mm-hmm. he Is he a writer on that show? I'm assuming. He he used to write for 30 Rock. Okay. So he's pro- I, yeah. he probably I mean, has his, he's, hand in, his hand in everything. His, he's multifaceted as shit. Mm-hmm. He's crazy. He'll be a guy that when we're like old ass men, we'll be talking about. Yeah. Back in the day, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino. Then there'll be little kids like, wait, which one's which? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he does stand-up again. He kind of started in stand-up, didn't he? I don't know. If he's, Did he start writing? for? I think he started in writing. Oh, okay. Cool. But he was always rapping like in the background. Yeah. He just never really brought it to the forefront. That's cool. Because I've, I've always wondered how he did get in with the music. Did he just want to rap? But, like, that's cool that he was into the music. You can tell he's been in the music. He's yeah, too talented. Sure. He's too talented to not not have that touch his life at some point. That's like, I saw an interview with Dr. Dre one time and he was like, man, he was like, you can't be rapping for, or making beats for money and like trying to get there. Obviously that's our motivation. Like just have the means to do it. But it's like, uh, he said, even if I'm, you know, if I'm 60 years old flipping burgers, he said, I'm still going to be making beats when I go home. Like Mm -hmm. he said, that's how much I like it. That's how much I love it. And that, that had a big role in my life. It was like, hell yeah. I was like, I like this enough to, even if I'm not putting music out, just to go write some verses every now and then. That shit's therapy for me. Yeah, for sure, man. I feel like if 
I mean, if I stay in this same position the rest of my life, I'm going to keep doing mm-hmm. open mics every every chance I get. Yeah. Probably not here. I'd have to move somewhere where there's more open mics, but yeah, we're making a little scene. So yeah, man, yeah, it's getting better. It looks a lot better, man. I haven't been out to I haven't been out to see any of y'all shows or anything, but I just know like the comic show I got coming to town and like the show. Y'all working on a tour, aren't you? Trying to, man. Yeah. I don't know if it's gonna pull through. I'm about to submit to a festival in Austin. Yeah. Hopefully that goes well. Hell yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Like y'all, y'all get out there and work. Like y'all do. Y'all do a lot of shit. I know, especially you. How many open mics you do a week? Well, um, I've got four new ones, but right now, this week we've only got three. First week of March, I think we'll have like four. We'll have like five, which would be dope. So you're probably you're probably doing like around twenty open mics a month. Yes, I want to do as many as possible. Yeah, because every other like I I was talking to Denver Comics and they're like, yeah, we have at least two mics a night, so. Except for like Saturdays, we only have one, so they get a chance to just go up an yeah. endless amount of times. Like it'd be great to be in like New York City, yeah, and just hit like five spots in one night because then your jokes like fire. Your jokes amazing by the fifth fucking open mic you do that night. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. It's like you got the you got the warm up mic and then you come up by the end of the night you've got the delivery down. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've always wondered how that works with like comedy because i've seen your stage pe- presence grow just from the handful of times i've been there every time i've been there the stage presence has been good i'm just like man like i haven't done any live stuff it's like what's a stage presence like like what's it like standing there with some eyeballs on you You know what i mean yeah it doesn't uh well i guess if it, it phases you always but it gets easier for sure yeah yeah, yeah. and then um just watching videos of myself i've helped with my body language a lot because i used to hate the way i move my arms and i still kind of do it sometimes but yeah now i just i'm less like a robot it's like watching film it's like watching <laughs> film when you're an athlete like yeah. just making checkpoints you know? that's like uh i saw <laughs> i saw a deal on little dicky's first concert and so little dicky blew up before he even did a show <laughs> and so his first show was like 1500 people that knew little dicky that's bad and they did like a little date or like a little vlog throughout the day and they ask him like today's your first show little diggy how you feel he goes oh i've had a terrible day <laughs> he was like i've had a terrible day but by the end of the show like everybody knew a song so it made it so much easier like mm-hmm. everybody was singing along and he was like yeah that was like the best shit i've ever done that's gotta be wild oh man so like everyone knows your lyrics you get up there it's your first show and 1500 people are like jamming your shit and you're like yeah i don't even know you people it's gotta be incredible oh yeah but that's rare i mean that's rare i feel like I feel like as a performer, you got to get on stage and suck like a bunch of times before you can really oh, yeah. master it. I don't even think I've stopped sucking yet, you know? Dude, every time I've been, you've been good. <laughs> well, thank you. Every time I've been. I remember the first the first 806 I saw you, you were good. And I was like, oh, damn, like this is mad shit. I was like, hell yeah. But then the next time I saw you, I was like, damn, like buddies, like I thought he was good back then. But like you made a huge jump. And I'm sure it's the same now. I need to get out and see you, man. But like I said, I just, I end up in that studio. Yeah, I feel it, man. I understand that. I was, uh, I try to go out and see local local bands and everything because I yeah. feel like, you know, I want them to support me. I want to support, I want to support the scene yeah, just man. in Amarillo. And then there's a lot of really talented musicians here in Amarillo. But they, yeah, same thing. I'm like, I could... I could be home riding right now, so. <laughs> yeah. I see I see a lot of the, on a lot of the podcasts, I go check a lot of the musicians out that you have on here, and there's a lot of good artists in Amarillo. There's a shitload. I didn't realize there's that many people doing music in Amarillo. Yeah. Like, it's just, we're all recluses, and we mm-hmm. all stay in our studios. I thought it was mostly, like, bands and stuff, but there's a lot of, like, rappers, too. Yeah. Like the, I didn't realize how many rappers there were. On the anti-Valentine show, there were, like, three or four rappers. Really? And they were all killing it. Hell yeah. It was cool. That's another thing, like, I I want to branch out and do is, like, we're all in Amarillo, there's a bunch of people rapping, like, we might as well hop on each other's songs and mm-hmm. shit and do some shit like that. I, my biggest deal is, like, if I'm going to do, like, live shows and shit, obviously open mic, you go up there and get on the mic, but there's been, like, some showcases that email me, like, I'm on, like, their email list, and they email me about different venues to go to, and, like, I'm just like, do I need to... <laughs> It's kind of still, I'm like, do I need to bring something? Like, what do, <laughs> what do I need to bring? Do I, I've got a, I've like, got a mic and two speakers. Word. That's what, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I never know if I'm supposed to like bring a mic yeah. and two speakers, or if I walk in with my mic and two speakers, they're yeah. gonna be like, bro, we got shit. 
and I'd be oh. like, Shit, well, I didn't if, know. if you need it, just let me know. Where? I'll let you borrow it. And hell then yeah. uh, my speakers, I don't know how you would play your music, but it's got Bluetooth oh, hell capabilities, yeah. so you hell can yeah. like play some shit on your phone and drive yeah. over it. And yeah. I don't know what musicians prefer to do. See, and that's, an, <laughs> that's, an, that's another part of it. I, and I think about this shit all the time. Like, I'm trying to plan for when that day does come because it's coming. Like hopefully this year I'll I'll like start getting on stages and doing mm-hmm. some shit like that. But um, yeah, it's like do you do you mix a different track like with your vocals turned down a little bit but still still backing you, or do you record a track with like just like the highlights where you need breath and shit to to you know basically crutch your voice along like as you take breaths you still have the lyrics and then like how do you that I need to know preferences on like how rappers do it and shit. I'm trying to explore yeah. that. Like I saw the other day, Meek Mill said, "This is the first time I've toured without lyrics," and so I went and watched the video. And it's he means like it's just instrumental, and he's just like raw voice, like rapping his shit. Oh. Meek Mill raps fast as fuck, so I'm like, how do you get oxygen for that, yeah. bro? Because I don't know. I have a tough time getting air. Like I think I just got to figure out when to breathe. I got to practice yeah. on when. I think that'll just come with experience. Yeah, just totally. doing it. And I work on that shit too. Especially on like a fast verse or like I'll, when I'm writing it, I'll sit there and I'll run it back. And I'm like, okay, right there, I need to put a space in my notes because I need to know to breathe mm-hmm. right there. Like take a little breath. like. And then you get where I'm, where I'm in there and I go, and you can hear it. And you got to you gotta cut that shit out. But I'm just working on it every day trying to get it perfect. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell like uh, when you've got like a – like I'll give an example. Like when I get a good idea – and I start writing it down, I can tell, like, it's going to be, like, a solid, a really solid joke. Like, yeah, man. Do you get that feeling, totally. like, when you get an idea in music? Totally. And that's why that's why I end up pissed off in the studio, because I'll be about, if, I, if I'm if i about to write a good song, if it's about to be a good song, and I, a song, song that I'm proud of, I'll finish that song in a day. Like, it's just oh, yeah. there, it's fluid, it goes... And, like, but that's not, like, every song, though. And I like putting music out, so there's times, like a song will take me like a whole week to write. And mm-hmm. if it takes me a whole week to write that thing, it's probably, I'll probably go back and probably won't even put it out just because mm-hmm. it's probably weak. That's when I feel like I force shit is when I'm in there and it's not fluid. Yeah. I'm in there cause I feel like I need to write mm-hmm. lyrics today. And it's instead of, you know, maybe going in there and working mm-hmm. on mixing some of the songs that didn't make a tape, like yeah. practicing my mixing or watching a tutorial on how to mix, like things like that. I just, I feel like I always got to get words out. I try to write too mm-hmm. much and uh yeah i write too much as well i just feel like i i there's only so many words man and there's only so many experiences i have right now it's like i can't it sounds weird i don't want to exhaust like everything i've already experienced just on like a couple pre like random tapes i've put out recently Mm -hmm. and it's like then you run it like oh well you know i've talked about this this and that like my songs are starting to have the same bars in them but like really what it comes down to is like, there's not a whole lot of people listening to me, like not a shit ton. And so it's like, man, if you come up with like different ways to say the same shit, it's like on a different song, on a different flow, different feel. It's just Mm -hmm. working with the music right now, trying to make the music good. Yeah. I just, I get caught up in the words, man. I love the words. That's been my favorite part of the music since day one is just like bars and wordplay and being creative with sentences and making stuff work two ways and, like, oh yeah, I've just always loved shit like that. But now I'm kind of, I'm really trying to focus on get, understanding music way more. Like I've I've started to learn some keys a little bit, like not a whole lot, but trying to understand the keys and understand the chords and notes and that's how, better. how to read the music. And it really it sounds crazy, but it really does help you even in rap. Like it helps you a shit ton. Oh, absolutely. Just understanding and fluid motion mm-hmm. in the music and knowing how to fit things in there and different things you can add because i feel like a lot of hip-hop like you can record a verse all day but it's what makes the song the best is the stuff on the back end of it like Mm -hmm. behind it underneath it the layers that you put on it and that's the biggest thing for me is layering shit yeah i feel like i got a lot of twang in my voice like a lot of south in my voice and Mm -hmm. that's fine but at the same time like on some beats that high end sits a little too high and i don't really like it so i try to like mix in some some ad libs and Mm -hmm. just some backing and make it a little fatter, make give it some texture, make it sound a little better. So I've been experimenting with that. And it's just oh, yeah. learning every day. That's dope, Learning man. something new every day. That's good. Like even, uh, I feel like studying out anything will, makes, you bet, makes you better at your main uh, endeavor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I got you. Like even, even if it's not music related, even if you're out. Totally. Like studying 
how to how to knit you know yeah because <laughs> it's like that it's, shit's helping your brain because it's like somewhere in there so like i'm a music guy so like i'm already a music person like i've been a music person my whole life so whatever i live and whatever i experience is gonna have a musical touch on it you know it's i'm mm. gonna i'm gonna apply that to music just because that's what what type of person i am like here's this comedy and writing mm. and it's like anything that you experience you know you're going to apply it back to me in some shape or form even if it just makes you a well-rounded human like it helps mm. your art it helps your creativity because i feel like creativity is just like a presentation of like what's inside mm. and so when you're experiencing like knitting like i'm not going to go write a bar about knitting <laughs> but maybe it gave me some sort of like knitting chi that helps me mm -hmm. like sit down and write a song that day it put me in a state of mind that helped me and i realized yeah. like oh man like if I'll do something complicated with my hands for a little bit, it really puts my brain in a good spot to write. Like, mm -hmm. it could be something like that. Like, yeah. you never know what's going to positively affect you. I feel like anything can. It's just how you look at it. That's true. And what what works for me, probably, I mean, everyone's different, so it doesn't. It probably won't work for a lot of people. Yeah. But just having um having your day scheduled. Yeah. Like, 8.30, 5.30, I'm at work. 6 to 8, I'm uh, at the gym. You know, 8.30, I eat dinner. Then from... 9 30 to 1 a.m it's when i try to write it's when i try to be creative you yeah. know take a puff take a couple of puffs of weed you yeah know, try to <laughs> yeah try to access that shit and that's like that's the thing i get caught up into that i worry that stifles my creativity is i get caught up in okay what do i gotta do to get me in writer mode mm -hmm. and it's like sometimes i fit sometimes like i'll go into a different mind state where it's like I'm a writer. I'll know when I need to write. Mm -hmm. I'll feel when I need to write. Yeah. But then you sit there all day paying attention to like, okay, when's that feeling coming? Like yeah. it, you get, I get so stupid about shit just because <laughs> like I'm trying, I just, that creativity, I want to find that groove and like go into it. But it's really hard whenever you have to live kind of a separate life to pay the rent, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But you want to be this like creative person. But like, even when I'm at work, like, I'll have a problem at work and it's just like, this ain't going to do shit for me. Mm -hmm. Like in my life, like what I really want to do. And it's like that attitude, taking that home into writing, like it, mm -hmm. it fucks up my whole day. And it's like, man, like you're a writer, just like, like you said, you're going to be at work from this time to this time. You're going to get home. And then like, we're good to go. You're Jace again. Like yeah. you can start writing. You don't even have to write. Just like do something for music, do something, mm -hmm. do something. So tomorrow you're not bitching about, you know, your music, not getting to where you want to go, but you didn't do anything yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like I can never look back and be like that. So I try not to get in the mindset of just like, try to try to get yourself like either smoke or do a puzzle or play a video game to get yourself in the mind to, mm -hmm. to, make music like i used to watch interviews and i'd see people like oh he plays madden before he goes in the studio okay i need to play madden like <laughs> i'm not him like yeah i just get caught up in that shit and that's it's funny like, everybody's different and there's different things that trigger sure. you yeah i get i feel like i get my best ideas at night me too but then i don't know sometimes i'll be at work like today i was at the gym and i didn't have anything on me and i was like oh it's a good idea I got to hurry up. I got to run to the locker and record this on my phone real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, is that critical? I freak, I've ran to like put my phone on a charger because I had to type a note. And if it died while I was typing the note, I was going to be pissed. Like, <laughs> I'll like run. Like, I need a charger. And I'll just start typing something. It's just like, man, when you have that, when you have that epiphany, it's, you always worry about when that light bulb's going out. Yeah, for sure. Because I have, I have a terrible time remembering shit too. And when you remember it in the moment, it's organic and mm -hmm. it's fluid. When you try to remember it the second time, it's like second hand. Yeah. And you don't remember it word for word how you in that, especially in rap that those words in the sequence that you had them in mean a lot, like yeah. syllables and shit. And I think there's something special when you physically write it down. Yeah. It means to me anyway. It means more. You mean like pen and paper? Yeah, pen yeah. and paper. Yeah. See, uh, I've written a lot of lyrics on pen and paper. And it's been some of my best songs. But then sometimes the most convenient thing is my notes mm -hmm. and my phone. And that's what I've written on since I was in high school. So mm -hmm. I'm really comfortable with that too. But it, it's weird. Like if I'm if I'm writing more of a moody song, like it's more of like on some sad shit or just not at height. Just mm -hmm. like just not like some rappy stuff. Like 
writing it on paper is way more intimate. It's, I don't know. Yeah. It's way different, especially when I'm reading it while I'm, yeah. while I'm rapping, like instead of reading it off of a phone that's hurting your eyeballs. Cause you've looked at it for mm-hmm. so long. Like I definitely like pen and paper, but sometimes I just get in on the phone and go yeah. after it. I think your brain works differently with the pen and paper. Cause yeah. it's like you're, you're thinking about everything you're writing, like yeah. every stroke. That process is slower. It's mm-hmm. not, and that's, that's another, I think that's the reason I go to, uh, notes on my phone a lot too is because i'm so like i gotta get that bar okay Mm -hmm. it's done okay next one like i don't want i don't want myself to lose the words like while i'm sitting here writing because like i swear i have the worst add ever and it's like i'll be writing and i'll be like oh man i love this bar and it's like oh shit what's the second half of it Mm -hmm. i was sitting there thinking about how i love this bar and like it was gonna be a good beginning and (laughs) my brain i feel like my brain's just active as hell like it's just super active same same I just get I get distracted really easy. Yeah, I feel like I'm developing adult ADD. <laughs> right. I, <feel laughs> like, like, I was fine in school, but uh, now it's now it's an issue. That's me too. Like I, I'm buying books I'm never gonna fucking open because like, <laughs> right, you opened it, you read the pre law. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a page in and be like, ah, oh, I could I'm gonna go do something else. I'm the wor- <laughs> I'm the worst because when I'm reading I'll be sitting there reading a paragraph. And I'll be thinking about that paragraph. That was a good paragraph. I got a lot out of that. And I'll be thinking about like, man, mm-hmm. I wonder what ho- homeboy did after da 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 da. Oh shit! I just read that whole page and was thinking about that one yeah. paragraph that I just read. And it, my eyes were working, but my brain didn't retain anything. Mm-hmm. It was or, like my reader ears. Or you're just thinking about something totally random, like what am I eating tomorrow for lunch? And then, as you're reading the book, and you have no idea. Yeah. What you just read. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bitch. Man, I hate that. And it's like. Is that ADD or is that just like 21st century humans? Like, yeah, probably, probably us. The goddamn internet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel like it makes me crazy because, like I said, that scrolls dangerous for me because all I follow is rap pages. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I see shit I like that stimulates me all the time. Like that's, I'm just that's like, oh, ass. cool, 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 and then it's like, shit, I get into that mode like. I've been here for 30 minutes scrolling through this. Like, why am I not doing something music related? Like, I didn't get anything out of that. Dude, I feel that on Twitter. I have the, do you have an iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, does it send you, does it tell you how much screen time you did in a week? Uh, I didn't, I haven't seen that. It's like, you average seven hours of screen time a day. Ooh, I need to put that on there. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that'll help (laughs) me out. I need to put that on there. Oh, man. Seven hours. Yeah. So it's like a weekly thing? What yeah. is it like a notif- is it like a push notification? Yeah, there's like uh if you go into settings you can uh set can another one of those? you can yeah, you can set limits on uh your social media time and whatever apps you don't want to use overuse. So I I do like at first I was doing three hours a day on social media. What does it do? Does it does it like pop up and tell you like you're done? Or yeah, does it, says it give you, you have, the option? You have five minutes left of social media time and then it like um not not fades, it gets it doles the little app icon. You can click on it and you can put remind me in 15 minutes or you can put um, ignore for the day. So I ignore for the day on um, Facebook Messenger and Snapchat so it because I gives pe- you the, it still gives yeah. you the option to. But yeah, I communicate. I have to communicate with Facebook Messenger and Snapchat with certain people. So I always turn those ones off. But everything else, I'm just like, oh, I'm done with it. I need to do that. But it kind of sucks because I don't really use social media on on the weekends, like when I'm do- But when I'm at work, it's really all I do. That's, that's <laughs> seriously. I always I always try to get on social media at work because really what it does is it makes me look like I'm busy. I'm like, hold on one second, and then you can just kind of walk off. <laughs> it's like, oh, buddy has an important phone call. That's funny. It's like, nope, I was. Sitting here watching Funny Mike on yeah. Instagram. I mean, it, it was good not having a Twitter for a while. Now I have one. Now I just can't can't stop opening it. Yeah, man, Twitter, Twitter's crazy. It is. You can you can be on Twitter. I only follow like a hundred people, and I can be on Twitter, and ref- it can be at the top of the page, and I can refresh it and have five new tweets, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, damn, it never ends. That's only a hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, like the whole world. Like, how many tweets just happened just yeah. now? Like, it's crazy. Social media is crazy. It's crazy what it's become from when we were in high school. You remember when Twitter and Instagram and all that was brand new? Yeah, I didn't give a shit about Snapchat. it. Snapchat, nobody cared, man. <laughs> nobody cared. I didn't have. That's my deal with Instagram right now. I still don't have pictures to mm-hmm. post. I, I didn't have a purpose for Instagram until I started doing comedy. And I've tried. Like, I've tried like, to like. I don't like looking at myself. Why would anyone else? <laughs> see, man. And I've tried to. I've tried to like get. I'm trying to get a following built, like, cause like. Amarillo is one thing, but like the internet's a good tool. Like I'm trying to, you know, 
use tools to get people from outside Amarillo to follow me, mm-hmm. like producers and stuff that maybe fuck with my music. And it's like doing that, you got to like do hashtags and, you know, yeah. work a little harder on social media, like on that little presence. But it's like, man, if you don't like post for like three days, you lose like 10 followers. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? It's like, y'all want to see a picture of me every day or you're out? Like, yeah, well, it just, it doesn't have a big picture of you. Just like, just content. Just yeah, like just something. Like, here I am in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at my, Here's my I looked notepad. at my page one day and I had about five pictures of my studios about the same picture at a different angle and i was like well nice. that's what my studio looks like <laughs> post a picture of your dog yeah 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 I bitches need, love bitches she's hilarious man. She, <laughs> but she sits like a human <laughs> she thinks she's such she thinks she's a person i've never seen a dog do that that's so funny every time like if she was in here she'd walk up on your, if i told her to get up on the couch she'd walk up there and then put her arm on the armrest like <laughs> what's up Scratch me. That's badass. She thinks she's something else. She's spoiled rotten. That's she, cool as hell. She gets to go to work with me. She's gotten to go to work with me her whole life. Like every job mm-hmm. I've had, she's gotten to go to work with me. Dope. So when I leave her, like I just left her at home and she was looking at me like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like you're leaving me at home? I'm going to New Orleans in a couple of weeks and she's going to be really pissed. I feel like I'll leave her <laughs> on that. Hell yeah. She's going to be mad. I'm ready for New Orleans though. You doing the Mardi Gras thing? No. Is that, it's, that it's gonna be. Yeah, 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 but okay. it's we're going the week after Mardi Gras. Oh. I wish we were going the week of Mardi Gras. Probably more fun after and less less crazy. Nah, shit. the streets, Bourbon Street's just gonna smell like puke and poop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna stink. Down I don't there. think that stench goes away though. No, <laughs> yeah, it's probably just Bourbon Street. That's how Bourbon Street smells. I went. I was there when I was in third grade, and I will. That's the first time I saw titties because nice. it was Mardi Gras. It was crazy. It was the Final Four. Um, it was when UT was in the Final Four, which was a long time. It was like yeah, 2000, way back. 2003. <laughs> 2003. Um, my cousin my cousin played for him, so we went to go watch. And it was nuts. It was Mardi Gras and the Final Four, the NCAA Final Four. So it was just a turn up. Of course, I'm third grade, so mm-hmm. I'm, not part- <laughs> I'm not participating <laughs> in anything. I'm just looking around in amazement, just like, holy shit. I'm sure I was a buzzkill for my wild. parents. So, do you just have a family of athletes? Yeah, man, we're a big, yeah. we're a big sports family. Like my cousin Chris, he played at UT. Um, he then he coached at UT, and then co- he went with the head coach from UT, Rick Barnes, to Tennessee and coached there. Got a job at UNLV, but then a day later he got a job at Tech, so he went to Tech. Wow, where his brother played. His brother Tanner played at Tech and coached a little bit, and then uh, but he ended up getting a job at Tech when they went to the Elite Eight last year. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. After that, he gets a job at University of Texas Arlington as the head coach now. Wow. Which is where my sister is an assistant coach. Damn. Yeah. And so, and then like, I don't know, my, on my grandpa, on my dad's side, uh, my grandpa's uncle is Billy Vessels and he won the Heisman Trophy at OU. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, man. He's got a statue out in front of the stadium. Damn. Like, yeah, so I'm a big failure in my family, dude. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. No, we're, there's a ton of athletes in my family. Like, my mom holds hurdle records at Perryton High School. Mm. Like, she still holds records there. Like, my dad my dad played football and stuff in high school, but he did rodeo. Like, he mm. was a cowboy. He liked that cowboy and stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, we got a lot of athletes in my family. Oh, yeah. My, uh, this man right here, my grandfather, he yeah. – uh, he was supposed to be in the NFL draft, but he like hurt his knee. But oh, like, damn. at his funeral, we had like six different like letters from different teams. Really? That were like trying to recruit him and everything. Damn, so, would have been dope. But I guess back in the day when you hyperextend your knee, you were just basically fucked. Like, oh, and <laughs> back in that day of football, hyperextension probably happened because someone literally like jumped on your leg trying to break it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that was man. tough football back then. He said he was stretching. He didn't even hurt it in a game. He said he was stretching, and two guys wrestling. Like, uh, fell on his leg. It's like, that no, fucking sucks. <laughs> Damn. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. But, and my my grandpa played, he played, he was a running back at Arizona State for a little bit. I don't think he stayed all four years, but he, I mean, he got a scholarship and went. But yeah, man. Athletics are cool. I was talking about sports the other day with my dad. I was like, man, I was like, it doesn't matter, like, what walk of life you are. Like, if you get to talking about sports, like, even if you hate, what they're talking about like it's always a funny ass conversation it connects people for sure i love sports and 
sometimes music sometimes music can get a little hostile but i feel like sports is always like good fun <laughs> it's always fun well, sports can get hostile too yeah it can which yeah, is crazy if you're up in philly or something yeah. like with the eagles those eagles yeah. fans are great i've heard they're mean as hell bro <laughs> the that violence was the team loyalty is crazy to me it's like they're not giving you a paycheck bro calm the fuck down like, <laughs> it's like no, man. the eagles aren't paying you I to fight know. for them <laughs> <laughs> Like, you guys suck. What'd you say? <laughs> they weren't talking about you. You didn't play. <laughs> oh, I'm a, what Do you like any NFL? Like, you got a favorite NFL team? Yeah, I've always been a Cowboys fan. See, I've always been a Broncos fan. But yeah, honestly, it's like, you know what we're talking about, the uh, being focused on writing and everything. Like, sports yeah. doesn't yeah. matter to me at all anymore. Like, <laughs> I know, like man. I still have favorite teams, and I'm like, oh, they won, they lost? Okay, cool, whatever. Like, my sister... Like, who's, who's the quarterback? <laughs> my sister and my cousin, Chris, they're, like, at the top of their conference. That's why we're going to New Orleans is for their conference tournament. Oh, yeah. They're at the top of their conference, like, wrecking shop, doing well. That's and, like, badass. my family's all talking about it, and I'm just, they're like, oh, did you see that game last night? No. Your sister's the assistant coach? Mm -hmm. At, uh... UTA. Okay. University of Texas, Arlington. That's She's the badass. assistant girls coach. Mm-hmm. And your um, uncle is the guys? No, my cu my cousin, cousin is the head guys coach. Okay, fuck yeah. That's badass. Dude, it was crazy how they ended up at the same school. Yeah, what are the odds? Cra crazy as <laughs> shit, man. So crazy. Do they have the same last name? No, uh, he's Chris Ogden. She has oh, our okay. last name, Vessels. that'd be funny if it was both Vessels. I know, it'd be nuts. <laughs> but yeah, I think everybody on campus kind of knows that they're cousins, though. Mm -hmm. They kind of knew that from the get-go. But it was crazy. We went down there to visit them and... We were back in the, like the locker rooms and the coaches' offices and stuff, and it was just it was funny because like Coach Gerlich is the head girls basketball coach, and she's from WT, and like she's like I think pretty sure she's a West Texas girl. She played at Lubbock at Tech, and she was like legendary there. She she won a national championship there, but like everybody kind of knows each other already, like in that coaching staff. But they're all down in Arlington, but they're all mm -hmm. like a bunch of West Texas people. And it's just really cool. They all wow. get along there. Hell yeah. They're having fun. They had, a, especially after they win, they have fun down there in the tunnel. Like, I bet. It was a party, man. Especially the, if you, I don't know if you watched the NCAA tournament. There's a team called Northern Iowa. It's like UNI. They're always in the tournament and they've gone to like the lead eight before. Like, they're, they're pretty salty. And Chris and them beat them like first game of the year. Hell yeah. And we were down there and it was lit. It was That's awesome. That's badass. Do, uh, does the women's have a March Madness? They do the same bracket. Yeah, so like that's what that's what we're hoping for Jordan and then on the girls team down there is so they're in a mid major conference, they're in the Sun Belt Conference. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that she like they get votes after they they have to win the conference tournament and win out win the conference in the regular season and then they hope they get votes to get in the NCAA tournament. They have so, to like, get they, votes. Yeah, because they're a mid major. Is that how men's works too? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Who votes? Just some committee, kind of wow. like the playoffs for football, but that it's seems like, like some rigged shit. Some, some, <laughs> some. Yeah, I know, right? Some conferences they have a deal with the NCAA tournament. It's like whoever wins your conference tournament like gets in, like mm -hmm. automatic bids. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the Sun Belt has that or not, but like we're hoping like Jordan then make the tournament and then like go play UConn and get mm -hmm. thrashed first game or something. Like that'd be cool to go yeah. watch. That'd be better. See, I don't see. You probably know more about it than I do, but I don't see why NCAA football doesn't have it playoff bracket thing like that like why is see and like i had this argument with, with actually scuba steve the other day i was like man like high school does it mm -hmm. like they like why can't we model it after a high school bracket you, your champion ended up being somebody you'd never expected just because they had a little more fight to them exactly like, I, or, think, I think it'd be awesome and like you don't even have to do as many teams as high school like you can break it down do it like the pro bracket mm -hmm. like man just a few more i think I think four teams like keeps it really. I don't know. It's still that controversial number yeah, that there's teams that don't get in. Like it almost doesn't change anything. I know. <laughs> it seriously, it seriously doesn't. Cause, but it's funny because like I was mad when OU got thrashed. I was like, man, see, like Georgia might should have got in. Mm -hmm. Then UT smacks Georgia. Yeah. But That's I will the beauty say, beauty of sports. I'm a yeah. I'm a UT fan, but I'll tell you right now, Georgia was a better football team. They just played like crap. Mm -hmm. And it's like if this was a tournament, UT would have moved on in the tournament, and upset Georgia. It would have been this big deal. Like instead, they won the Sugar Bowl, went home with a trophy, and said "Yeehaw!" Like mm -hmm. it's like, man, if we had a tournament, no telling. Like Texas could have been getting hot. Like yeah, 
I don't think they'd have won the Natty, but who knows what they could have done. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's, I really feel like they should do something cool like that. I that would be, be badass. Because March Madness and basketball is so fun. Yeah. It's so fun to watch. I always I always try to watch like the first couple of days just because there's so many games. Mm-hmm. It's like, damn, there's this much TV on like basketball-wise. Like I love watching sports. Like I said, I come mm-hmm. from a sports family, so especially basketball. My whole family's basketball, big basketball. And it's just like, man, like – that first couple of days is lit. Imagine a football tournament. Yeah, that'd be oh insane. Oh, my God. And that wouldn't – would it take away from the bowl games? I feel like they could still have bowl games, right? That, that's what they do now. Like the sugar yeah. the sugar bowl and then the orange bowl was like the semifinal. Or, or maybe the orange bowl was the championship. But, like, they had the fiesta bowl. Like, you just apply different bowls to different rounds of the playoffs. Like, that's all you do. And it's like people don't want to lose the Rose Bowl. Well, you make the Rose Bowl the championship because it's the oldest, like, probably – it's probably the oldest bowl I think the Rose Bowl is in mm-hmm. Pasadena. Just make that the championship. It's it's old and classic. Like, what's better than that? Like, it's true. I don't know. That's why they don't hire me in the NCAA. Yeah, I'm just I'm thinking there's got to be like too much money invested in the in the bowl games. Maybe I don't know. I'm just guessing. Just throwing shit out there. Yeah, it's it's it probably has everything to do with who has a contract with what and the little contracts in between. That is just like we'd break all this business up. Mm-hmm. And it's just like yeah, but think of the money you'd make with the new business. Yeah, should be nuts, bro. And think about like how much how much more people would watch the college football because how many people are like, oh, it's gonna be Alabama on someone this year. I don't give a exactly. shit. Exactly. Everybody who watches <laughs> everybody who watches the football playoff is praying for Alabama to lose. Yeah, and like that's the price of being the best, just like the Patriots. But it's like, man, like that tournament is gonna give Alabama the the opportunity to lose because mm-hmm. they got they got to win three or four games to get there, like. And in playoff football, like, that changes the environment. Yeah. Totally changes the environment. I think that's why the Patriots rose to the top, because playoff football just yeah. changed the environment. And it's the, my favorite thing that they say. They say this in the NFL, but it works in every sport. It's not who you play. It's when you play them. Yeah. And that's, that's 100%. Like, yeah. you could lose to the, the worst team in the league because of when you play them. Like, maybe they go on a roll at the very end of the season. Just like UT. Start whooping ass. They were hot. Yeah. They were hot. They were doing well. They had a good attitude towards the end of the season. We're kind of rolling. And they go and they run into Georgia. And I'm I'm thinking, like, I'm not even going to watch this game because they're about to get smacked. And they smacked Georgia. They looked so tough. And I was just like, I was so happy. Yeah. And I'm sitting there just like, man, like, sports is special. You think about baseball, man. The worst team can win the World Series. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably why they have 162 games so or something. Games, dude. Like that. That shit about? They probably do that so the worst team can't get to the playoffs. Because <laughs> if they had like a 20-game season, mm-hmm. there'd be some scrubs in there that just made it just because they got hot at the end of the season or something. Dude, I can't watch baseball unless I'm high. It's weird. <laughs> dude, basically. Because my brain slows down and I'm like, oh. This is in, this the, is exciting. The, pro- <laughs> the problem the problem with professional baseball, like you watch college baseball, it's pretty exciting. Um, but I, I'm a baseball player, so I mm-hmm. like that shit. But it's like pro baseball. The problem is, man, like all these egos jogging, walking off the field, mm-hmm. jogging off the field, ten minute commercial in between an inning, like, and then after that, okay, we're take we catch our catch our ball back from the catcher instead of getting back on the mound, getting ready to pitch like yeah. you would like in high school, like yeah. You just have to walk around, look cool, pop the yeah. chain a little bit. I feel like, like that should be like some sort of shot clock. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, that's, that'd be so sick. People would hate it, but it's just like, man, like people don't watch baseball anymore unless it's like the last three innings of the World mm-hmm. Series. Like even the World Series, man, like seven game series, whatever, whatever. Man, this is baseball. Y'all need to do a five. Y'all need to do a five game series because these are long games. And I love watching the World Series. I love how long the game is but it's like man like for consumership if you're talking about people watching baseball and like i don't know how baseball gets paid that much money because it's like damn that's a good question because y'all i know y'all don't have the viewers like the nba and shit like there's no way but it's just because like probably because there's 162 games in a year and they make more money than it costs to put on a baseball game like every time like that makes sense but man i don't know how the breakdown is but it's just like i always wonder how does baseball make that much money it's a good ass question. Shout out freaking Jake Rogers because Jake Rogers is moving up to the big sometime soon. Where's, I hope. He, where's he's, he? He's he's with at? Detroit, but he's uh, he was with the Erie Sea Wolves last year. It's a double A, mm-hmm. and uh, but man, he's like he's probably the best catcher in the minor leagues right now. Like, that's ass. not just saying that. So he's a, a he's about to move to majors. I don't know when. I just say that because he needs to. Oh yeah, need to move Buddy up. He's so good, man. I, know, I definitely know that dude's a beast. There's there's tons of tons of like big MLB articles on him talking about how he he is like 
the best uh, defensive catcher in the minors. Like he's that's crazy. the guy. He's just he broke the record. He broke the franchise record for the Erie Sea Wolves for runners thrown out last year. Wow, broke the record. And Double A is just a step below MLB, right? Or is there an, uh, another level? Triple A. So okay. you got you got like there's like two below single A, like rookie. Some sort of transition ball, like after right after you get drafted, there's like two, and then it's single A, double A, triple A, and then the bigs. Okay, so he'd be. But Buddy, I mean, yeah, they'll probably move him up to triple A first, but I mm-hmm. think they need to take Buddy all the way to the top. He's yeah. he's so solid. If, I, if he plays next season, is there any chance he'd come to Amarillo? I don't think so because I think they're not like in the they they play in different leagues. There's like a handful of leagues mm-hmm. in the minors, and I don't think he plays in that league. But this is a double A team. Yeah, I always thought about that. That'd be cool if he That'd came. Be in, but I, I don't think I don't think they will. I need to check and see. That'd be sweet. Yeah, right. I didn't realize, dude. I, the f- freaking Amarillo fans would go crazy just because yeah. Jake's Jake's doing really well. I talked to the uh, one of the marketing guys for the Sod Poodles. Yeah, and I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. Like double A. And yeah. he was like, "There's double A guys that go straight to the league sometimes." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh that's, shit!" And so we're like, I think I think Jake should be one of them. But yeah, yeah. there's there's guys that would just get jumped up. We're and gonna it, see some like real major league players come through Amarillo. It's gonna yeah. be crazy. And uh, the cool thing is, is like, so Manny Machado just went to the Padres, and this is a Padres organization with mm-hmm. the Sod Poodles. And so it's like, man, Manny Machado like gets hurt. I, like I'm not saying I'm saying I hope he does. I'm not saying I hope he does, but like say <laughs> say he gets hurt, like they, and they like need him to like, do some rehab games. Like most time they'll send you to AAA, but sometimes they send you down to the Double A team. Really? And like they'll come down here and do some rehab games in the middle of the Damn. season. Like so, yeah, there could be like a big star come to Amarillo and do some rehab games. Like, that's wild. Yeah, man. Like that's the possibility. You ever, you've heard of the San Antonio Missions, haven't you? No. That's who. That's who the Sod Poodles like took over. They were in San Antonio. Was, I knew it was a San Antonio team. I just didn't yeah, know the yeah the mascot. Over. And I always knew the mission. So like when I heard that they were coming here, I was like, "That's really cool." I thought it was super dope. That is dope. A lot of people are pissed about it, but I was like, "Why?" Like that's something to do. Like yeah. you can go to a ball game. Like they're revamping uh, down. Have you been downtown yeah, recently? Yeah, downtown looks it's crazy. Good. Polk Street. It looks good. It's getting crazy. I'm glad they're doing it. Like. Like yeah. I said, I hear a lot of complaints. I'm just like, why, man? Like, we need to update this place. Like, yeah, let's and make I can, it. I understand the arguments. Like, we also there's a lot of poverty, and we need to help the people. Yeah, but also like, I just, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cool, and like that's just being human. Like all the nice and shiny things are cool. Like yeah. it's nice, but like I'm. That's another thing. It goes back to like me being stuck in creative mode. Like I want like a little nightlife in Amarillo. Yeah. That's like fun to go hang out. Like the nightlife is only gonna make it make this a, a more interesting place. Yeah, and it's Amarillo's growing like crazy. Yeah. So like you might as well you know put some revenue in downtown. Like I'm gonna build a comedy warehouse here. Hell yeah! So get ready for that. Hell yeah! What are you gonna do? You're gonna keep comics in there. I'm gonna get uh, <laughs> have an have an inventory of comics yep. on deck. Which one would you like? Um, <laughs> like a sex doll factory? No, but hopefully, I mean, p- people tour comics tour through Amarillo just because they're either on their way to Austin or they're on their way to Denver. So we're a, a perfect middle spot. So we might as yeah. well build a fucking comedy club so we can actually have like you know a place, yeah. a destination, a spot where people want to watch comedy, yep. as opposed to going to a bar. Where half the audience is turned the other direction, like oh, I don't give a fuck. Right, because yeah, and I've noticed that too. And I've gone to open mics. It's like half the audience didn't even know it was comedy open mic. They're uh-huh. just there to have a beer. Yeah, and it's like you're right. You need a venue that's like people came there to watch comedy. Mm-hmm. They want they're tuned into the jokes. Yeah, I feel you on that. That's the best part about the 806. Is no one there is drunk. Yeah, no and they're, they're all drink. there for create. They want to yeah. hear the creativity. That's mm-hmm. that's what I do like about the 806. Is everybody really goes there like. Obviously, they have conversation or coffee, or whatever they do, but yeah. it's like the creativity is a big part of it there. Definitely, it's the most it's the most intimate room for comedy, hands down. When we when I went to watch you at Zombies one time, and I remember there were some hecklers in there just because like they weren't cool with comedy mm-hmm. night, and it's just like that was was that my very first show. Uh-uh. No, I don't think it was that one. No, 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 no. no. There's always you'd hecklers. Been, at zombies. You'd been doing it, but yeah, they were. There were just some dudes at the bar, and you could tell like they were mad that it was comedy night. Mm-hmm. It's just like, well, I mean, you're on a sixth street, like there's tons of. Or there always is, man. We tried to. Uh, I knew it was going to be a disaster. This dude named Chaz, he cuts my hair. He's a comedian. Chaz, uh, Chaz, he uh, convinced Duke Tracy's to book an open mic. He's like, we're going to do an open mic Thursday during karaoke, and I was like, dude, that's going to be terrible, but I'm down. I'll do it. I'll help you out. 
It was like, no, if we if we approach it the right way and we get the audience involved, we can kill it, man. I'm like, no, we're not. That's not that's not how it works, bro. Like they're they're there for karaoke. They're gonna be pissed at us, but I'll but still let's do, do it. it. Yeah, like, <laughs> and it went exactly like I expected. Like yeah. <laughs> as soon as we went up there, people left. They were like, oh, I'm not here for this shit. And then I was up last. So by the time I was up there, like almost whole, the whole dead. room was gone. <laughs> the practice round. I was just like, I told you, man. I fucking I told you the whole time. You should have gone up there and made jokes about it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. We need to. That's another thing. Is like I, I've I've always been interested. Like you all want to do live shows and things like that. But like the hip hop audience, I feel like in Amarillo, I feel like the hip hop doers are bigger than the hip hop audience. And I feel like the hip hop audience really isn't going, you know, yeah. downtown and doing that thing in certain spots, maybe. Mm-hmm. But it's like you. Get, I think for a hip hop show, especially like. Hip hop shows don't sound as good as like an instrumentation concert, you know, like with well, instruments in it. Like that was always my thought process. But then I saw the dudes at the 806, and they were fucking crushing it. And the crowd was involved, and I was Fuck like, yeah. "This is badass." Fuck like, yeah, I can, need to go see it. Then I need to go watch. There's definitely. I think you just there's a demand for it. We just don't know about. It. They don't know that they want it yet. Right. And that's the same with comedy. Yeah, man. Because that's like like we said, like hip hop's at the top right now, and so it's like it's on everybody's mind, like everything of course in my world is like everything that's like popping right now is hip hop mm-hmm. hip hop has touched it and i i'd love to see more live hip hop yeah. I, like, I love live music in general and bro that's another thing is like i'm i'm trying to figure out the studio and the engineering and all that stuff and it's like man um people people really feel you if you go up there and you put on a decent show like with the words like people can people might like your vibe you put off on certain songs and then and then they end up you know, going back and listening to your recorded songs and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they pay attention more to what you're saying. Cause my big deal with my music is what I'm saying. It's yeah. not necessarily like you can bob to it or something yeah. like that. Like I'm really trying to like say something, have good bars and shit like that. It's like really rappy is what mm-hmm. it's like. Rappy, rappy. So it's like, I feel like if you can give people a show to where they're like, Oh, who's this dude? Like all oh, black sheep. So then like they go to the, cause people hate SoundCloud that you tell them go to SoundCloud. They're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like if you get if you can connect to local people like in on a personal level mm-hmm. like face to face they see your flesh they see you in person like they're like oh okay i'm gonna go see what this dude's about and then they listen to the studio version and they're kind of listening to the words because yeah. live it might be hard to understand but it's like that's a good way to like bridge that gap because mm-hmm. i feel like right now like i kind of have the same little people listening to me like that i get a lot of replays like people play me mm-hmm. like people who do play me play me a lot but it's like i want to like reach an audience to where people are like yo like do you hear what he said on this bar like because i'm mm-hmm. like i said i'm big on the words like i want people to be like that's what i want to be known for is like my lyrics yeah. i want to be good at the music but i want people to be like do you hear what he said like how he said it like nah, nah, nah. that's just dope that's my favorite part of the music that's that's like some of my favorite rappers like absol you listen to absol hell yeah listen to absol dude's incredible yeah man. like next level sh- i don't Dude, even know yeah <laughs> there's sometimes like i won't get shit for forever like kind of like kind of like Lil Wayne too, but Ab Soul's on some different shit. Like mm-hmm. there'll be a bar where I'm like, I don't like, what the hell is he saying? I don't yeah. like that. I wouldn't like the way he said something like how he put it. I'm like, why did he do that? And then I'll get it. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. like the way he, like he changes his voice sometimes on certain words. And I'm mm-hmm. like, why did he say it like that? And then I'll get like, he literally, some, there's sometimes he'll say two words within the same word. I don't know how to explain it. Like he says <laughs> two words, but he pronounces it a little different. So you can drag it out and say mm-hmm. like a different word. I don't know, man. Absol's nuts. Lil Wayne's nuts. Mm-hmm. Like, I love a rapper that I can listen to for years of the same song and still go back and just be like, for sure. oh, how did you think of that one? But yeah, like Lil Wayne, Absol, like guys like that, you just, every time you replay the song, you hear it differently. You hear it differently it's every time. Dope. And you catch something different. I don't know. And the, the thing about Lil Wayne and Absol both is not only do they have that that wordplay and the lyrical value, the music's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like the music part, it's just, it's great. Absolutely. It's great. Lil Wayne's new album that he dropped, Carter Five, was awesome. Yeah, it really I, was. I loved it. I was man. super I impressed. Loved it. I was, I was so blown away because I had, I had high expectations, but I was worried. Honestly, I had low expectations, so I was like, I, okay, Fuck yeah. okay. I had, I think I had high aspirations. Like I wanted it to be yeah. great, but I, I really did. I had lower expectations, and he blew me away. Mm-hmm. It really blew me away. Like I was 
super impressed. I thought it was super up to date because I worried about it mm-hmm. being out of date. Yeah, I did too. I was like, this is he made some new tracks. Been on hold for like you can 10 tell years. he made he made some new tracks for sure. Yeah, I like the way he used um X X man that that feature yeah. was nuts. I it loved was. that. And I, I didn't I didn't realize this since I listened to uh I get Joe Rogan's podcast. He had Travis Barker on. And I know uh, X had some songs with Travis Barker, but he like produced a lot of his music. Like yeah. he's he's big in hip hop. I didn't realize that. Man, uh, that he's, sucks. He's huge in the hip hop game. I feel bad because I didn't. I mean, I always saw dude. I always saw X like in the news. Yeah. And so I was always like, eh. Like I so never, I didn't even explore him. I was like, he's just one of these SoundCloud dudes. Like mm-hmm. whatever. He's like popping on some LA shit. Yeah, I know he's from Broward County, but. I was just like, he's just on some SoundCloud colored hair stuff. But no, like, dude actually, like, is music. Like, he was a yeah. musical dude. Insanely big. talented. Some of my favorite songs are the songs he doesn't even rap on. I know. They're like the just the emotional dude, love songs. He has, like, he has, like, almost, like, some screamo shit. Yeah, that's just and dope. It's fucking awesome. It's and incredible. Then, and then he'll go into, like, don't cry. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, dude, like, it really sucks that you got shot, mm-hmm. like. There's no telling what that yeah. dude would have done. And he, it seemed like, and I don't know completely, but it seemed like he was on a path to bettering himself. He like was, and he, like he people was, always talk about like his charges and stuff. Like the charge against the girl, like about beating the girl. After he died, she like got on the internet and said, "Y'all need to shut up." Like that situation was like a complicated situation. It's not as simple as y'all are making mm-hmm. it seem. She was like dude died and didn't deserve it like she was taken up for him and i was mm-hmm. like see like if she's the victim and she's telling y'all to chill out on that like yeah. he he was a good guy with a history of bad shit mm-hmm. like and he's trying to turn that around by because he found music and yeah. like his music went somewhere and he was like oh i want to do good now why is that not a positive thing like yeah, people sure. people are so caught up in like people's past and like yeah what they've said in the past and it's like if you want people to change you, but you won't let them. Mm-hmm. Like, you yeah, want, that's why social you want media to better themselves. But that you, you're not even gonna let them. Social like, media is extremely toxic. Yeah, like you're you're not gonna forgive Kevin Hart for something he tweeted in 2003. God, that's exactly what that's I'm talking about. Fucking bro. ridiculous. Like, like they don't want Louis C.K. to ever perform ever again. Like, how long does what's do the you statute have to of limitations yeah. on that? Like, exactly. It's like, bro, like. Ugh. It drives me crazy when I see ridiculous. people like digging stuff up from old shit, like. It's like, bro, it's all thing, hate. Like, I think about myself when I was 18. That was six years ago. Yeah. Not even a long time. Yeah. I am a totally different person. Mm-hmm. My outlook is different. Mm-hmm. It's better. I've bettered myself. So, like, if you're mad at me for things I said, like, when I was 18, yeah. and then you're getting mad at these dudes for, like, 10 years behind, like, mm-hmm. bro, like, people develop. You're not going to allow anybody to change. Like, nobody's going to yeah. want to change because y'all won't let them. Like, exactly. it's damn you, even if you said this back when you were younger and stupid. Like There were, there were times in my life where I was homophobic right and like, it's just it, i didn't hate gay people i just didn't know right and i gay people like i didn't, didn't know. know any gay but didn't yeah. know anything about it like mm-hmm. just the overtone of it was different to me so it's like yeah i made jokes and thought of it this way yeah but now that i know actual gay people and i'm like oh like i just didn't i didn't have an understanding now that i have an understanding it's like yeah you gotta you it's gotta so, let people grow yeah man like that's our problem i feel like we don't let any we always talk about well, we just need to make a. Everybody wants to make a better life and wants everything to be sunshine and mm-hmm. rainbows. And it's like, how can it be sunshine and rainbows if you're not willing to forgive? Forgiveness yeah. is part of sunshine and rainbows. Like, and you're throwing all these people under the boat. What the fuck have you done? Are you are you an angel? Like, yeah, what, do, you like sit on, do you sit on Twitter all day and get pissed at people? Like, social warrior, come on, you've bro. never fucked up once. And I, you've I'm never? all I'm all about like like I I get mad when I hear people saying race. Like that's one of my biggest deals. Like racist shit. I get mad at racist shit, but it's like at the same time like. You have to look at people and, like, there's some people that are around me, like, at work. They're a bunch of old old country dudes. Yeah. And they say racist shit all the time. And I'm in a business, so I can't, like, tell them, hey, shut the fuck up. Yeah. I got to sit there and kind of just, like, you motherfucker. But it's, like, at the same time, like, I want to hate them. But yeah. the dude grew up with his dad. Like, yeah. that's the only world he knew. He doesn't understand exactly. what I understand. And it's, like... My, I think where now I've gotten to where I just look at them like, man, I wish I could educate you or just enlighten you on like what I see yeah. and like who my friends are, and like I wish you could see another side of it. That's really sad that you see it that way. It's not. It's gotten to where I like I don't hate you because mm-hmm. why would I hate you for having hatred? Like that's yeah. that's stupid. That doesn't and get anywhere. Like, they're not even necessarily like a terrible person. I mean, obviously racism is terrible, 
but like a lot they of pe- just they just don't have that life experience. Yeah, and a lot of people they were just a lot of people say racist shit to they me because they look they look at me and they think I'm white and they think I'm okay with that and it's like, <laughs> damn dude, like you need to get out of Amarillo, like go see the world a little bit. Like everybody yeah. who's white doesn't think like that. Like I'm not on that same wavelength. Mm-hmm. Like, like and there's been like there's been plenty of times like I've told people like uh, I don't do that. Like that ain't funny to me. And then it makes things uncomfortable, and then they're like, mm-hmm. oh, 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 and it's like, yeah, you you want to make me feel guilty, but like you're the one making me uncomfortable. Like you just you don't understand what I understand. Like I'm not gonna judge you for it, but like don't say that shit around me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I I love talking about race because I think it's fun, but my shit like <laughs> it's obviously a joke. Like they uh mm-hmm. when they talk when they make jokes about hanging people, it's just like there's nothing funny about yeah, that. Yeah, when there's like violent there's yeah nothing funny about that. When there's historical, like violent undertones on that shit, like yeah, that shit ain't funny. But it's like we need to get away from thinking like like just like the gay thing, like there's gay jokes that I know gay people that laugh at them, they think mm-hmm. they're funny. Like there's white jokes that I think are hilarious, like we can all laugh. It's just like we gotta. We're trying to draw boundaries instead of just like understanding boundaries. Mm-hmm. Like we just need to understand what hurts and what doesn't, and like going too far on shit. Like if you really want to do ill will towards somebody, you're wrong, all because of skin color, mm-hmm. like shit like that. But it's like making jokes and making funnies. Like there's a line to it, but it's like it's still funny. Like it's jokes. Yeah. Like come on, like bro. Like I make fun of my friends all the time. Yeah. I make fun of my girlfriend all the time. Like mm-hmm. not like it's just like. Jokes are jokes, man. Yeah, like dude, you, I, my my family. Like I grew up in a household where like all they did, all we did was talk shit to each other. That was how uh-huh. we loved each other. We would talk shit. Yeah, we would talk shit. Exactly. Like, if we came out of the, I if thought we came everyone out of the was raised wearing, like that. They're wearing not. something funny. Like, like my dad, my dad's country is fuck. So I come out of the room in like some colorful Nikes and like a colorful shirt, and like he's like. <laughs> Where are you going to the <laughs> queer convention or something? It's like, dude, what what does that have to do with that? Like, what are you talking about? Oh, that's but like, funny. he makes jokes like that, and it's like, bro, like, you're not funny, first of all, mm-hmm. and second of all, why are you making a comment on what I'm wearing? Like, that's just the <laughs> life I'm from. Like, he just makes jokes and yeah. shit. Like, that's, I don't know, man. That's we, always how it's been. Like, I've I was roasted my whole childhood by my whole family. Me too. I just, I, dude, I was the <laughs> whipping post when it came to jokes in my house. Like, I was just so different from everybody, and like, they loved to make jokes about it. And I love, I loved being the guy that got yeah. clowned on. That's I loved, what, I loved being different enough to like get clowned on. I think the people that get easily offended weren't raised like that. I think they were just raised yeah. in like a little yeah that you're special and you, yeah, fine. and you're special. Don't <laughs> let anybody tell you different. It's just like no, you're not special. You're just another yeah. human on the planet. You're special, but I'm gonna roast you because mm-hmm. you're not special. Like, I got kicked off Twitter because I didn't realize that. Like yeah, people would talk shit to me, and I'd be like, oh okay, we're having fun. We're gonna do a little but, we're gonna do a little back and forth and yeah. then i talk some shit and i get reported but you just called me you just said i fucked my sister because i'm from texas like yeah. what is what yeah is exactly that? and you're mad at me for a, a like a insensitive joke and it's like <laughs> that's insensitive like what are you talking about i know man there's i don't know there i feel like we're trying to draw too many lines whenever really it's it's more of like a philosophical thing and a feeling of like knowing how to hurt but we all know how to hurt people and we all know mm-hmm. what hurts people and it's like don't do the oh, i was joking i was joking mm-hmm. but at the same time like we know i'm gonna argue with you because i know when it's a joke like i'm yeah. not gonna get mad at you for every little thing you said just, we've gotten so sensitive man for sure for sure but yeah every time i have gotten kicked off twitter i was fucking around like every every time i've gotten reported i was just fucking around like i've never seriously gotten mad at someone yeah and that's a, and that's another thing is like I've had to stop doing like I'll read stuff on Twitter and I'll get mad at them and I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, there's seven point whatever billion people on the planet. Do you think everyone's gonna think how you think they should think? It's a good point. No, there's so there's so many possibilities of opinions out there. Like mm-hmm. think of the po- possibilities on a Rubik's cube, and that's not even that many squares. Like think about if every person was a square on a Rubik's cube, how many times you'd have to flip that Rubik's cube to get everybody a solid color? You know what I mean? That's cool. You're ne- a good way to look at it. You're never going to get everybody on the same page. And it's like, just respect that there's different point of views. Yeah. Like, I hate racist people. But like I said, there's guys that say racist stuff. And I'm like, you're probably don't have a racist soul. But your dad said all that mm-hmm. stupid shit. And you think it's okay. Yeah. Like, it's just like, I don't hate you for it. I just I don't agree with where your mm-hmm. head's at. Like, 
That's a, and that's another thing is like I can't not stand racist people. I can say I hate racist people, but it's like it's not any good to like yeah. hate haters with hate. Mm. Like it doesn't do no good. It's just like I'll pray for you, bro. Like and the majority of these racists, at least the ones we went to high school with, you know who I'm yeah. talking about. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll they'll crack a black joke and they'll be like, "Oh, what's up?" Like a black guy walk by yeah. and be like, "Oh, yeah, they'll tap like, him up." Yeah. Like it's like, "Okay." And it's like, <laughs> "Say that <laughs> joke you just said, bro." <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's like they're like I've been around a bunch of cowboys and it's just like they'll say a joke and I'm like you want to say that to my friends like you wouldn't say that if my friend was standing here like mm-hmm. you know Will it's mm-hmm. like if Will T was standing right here you would not <laughs> say that I know that for a fact I know that for a fact there was one time we were at a party and uh, you know Jesse mm-hmm. um, is this at Tucker's house yeah, yeah you saw that shit I think I know what you're talking about yeah yeah man dude spouted the n-word off at him thinking it would be cute and funny yeah because this guy he's the type of dude that thinks he's cute and funny and jesse had that dude almost in tears I, yeah, bro. That was... <laughs> and bro jesse doesn't get mad mm-hmm. like he he's a level-headed dude mm-hmm. Je- jesse like i like having jesse in my life because he kind of keeps me level-headed because i'm an extreme dude i, mm-hmm. I want to get pissed i want to fight you right away jesse's always like man it ain't worth it bro just going with you day like, cool dude he's a level-headed guy and I when i saw him, him i see get him pissed, with his beard now yeah, bro. He's got the, he's got a cool ass look going on. He's got the shag going. He looks good though. But what the I d I don't remember how it I think dude, like Jesse told him something and then No, like, like he, he came he, back. No, with, he just walked by. Jesse hmm. and them were walking by and dude just spouted off, What's up? In words, mm-hmm. like and Jesse said, No, like you ain't gonna call me that I didn't see like the whole conversation. I came out of the house and Alexa Michael has, Michael was there too, right? Yeah, Michael okay. was there. And uh, I come out in the garage, and Alexa has these big eyes on. I'm like, "What are you looking at me like that for?" And she was like, "Don't do anything." And I was like, "What?" And she goes, "That." She was like, "That guy over there just called Jesse the N word." So then I mm. I haul ass over there like, "Oh no, fuck this dude!" You know, we're drinking, so we're mm. like, "Let's go." Yeah. And then I get over there. Jesse's already has this dude like tail in between his legs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I was like, "Oh shit! I don't gotta do nothing." <laughs> Jesse's yeah. about to make this dude shit his pants. That's funny. Yeah, man, it, just that type of stuff. It's like, man, it's pretty evident where the boundaries are on mm-hmm. that stuff, man. Like, yeah. you can't, I don't know. And, like, the people on Twitter, I feel like, are, like, super sensitive on the homophobe stuff. But it's like, I understand, like, everybody wants everybody to be equal and they want mm-hmm. they want everybody to feel like they're welcome, which I do, too. Mm-hmm. But it's like, let's just... Let's get along even when we don't get along. Yeah, but, <laughs> if, but even if you are equal, if you are equal, that means you're equally going to get made fun of. Exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> At yeah, least yeah, from yeah. my standpoint. So, like, if we want to be equal, like, you, you you, should be able to take jokes, too, then. Absolutely. Like, everybody should be able to take these jokes, but it's just like, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy thing how humans, it's always a human battle, like, ever since the beginning of time is, like, who belongs and who doesn't mm-hmm. belong. Yeah. And what you can say and what you can't say. And it's just like, not everybody's gonna think that way. Yeah, not everybody's gonna have that opinion. That's funny. I got uh, attacked on Facebook one time because uh, someone shared an article. There was like, uh, a trans person in New York can now go to the prison they identify as, and I was just being stupid. I just commented trans privilege, <laughs> and people blew the fuck up. For real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> this one guy was like, "I've seen you do comedy at eight oh six. You're not funny. I leave every time you're up. You shouldn't have to make fun of a of a of a group that's been hey corgis. Oh snap! You shouldn't have to make fun of a group that's been uh, what's it called? Shit, I forgot what words I'm trying to say. They've been ostracized, criticized, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you shouldn't have to make fun of these groups to be funny. I was <laughs> like, have you ever seen comedy? Because it's like that's- yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. My my biggest deal is like everybody gets mad at like at like they're at a certain level of what they're getting mad at. Like I guess right now it's big on trans and like homophobic stuff, and it's mm-hmm. like, all right, man, like when are we gonna get mad at midget jokes then? Because <laughs> y'all are laughing at those. Like <laughs> y'all need, jokes are forever. You funny. can't pick and choose which group of people you want to protect. Like mm-hmm. come on now, like, Asians, man. <laughs> yeah. Asians don't give a shit if you make fun of them. They, I mean. I don't really know. I haven't explored that one. I feel like they're just like the most resilient people. They just they just work their ass off and make more money than everyone else. And yeah, like, and they're just like, yeah, crack them jokes. <laughs> crack them jokes. I'm in, I'm in the Audi, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. That's how you got to take it, too. Yeah. That's how you got to take it. Make your jokes all you want. I'm an like, Audi. Like, people say that we're in a white supremacist country, but uh, Asian people make more money than, yeah. than white people. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Have you ever seen The Fix? No. The Fix. Uh, it's a show on Netflix. It's an informative show, but it has some comedy in it. I love it. D.L. Hughley's on it. Oh, I like him. Um, yeah, go watch The Fix. Uh, they talk about, like problems that we talk about all the time in everyday society but they like throw a comedic spin on it and then the, are you left-handed yeah shout out to lefties you, left-handed you had to, you had to ride around the binder your whole life too? yeah it's Hell the yeah. struggle you got that obama handwriting <laughs> is he left-handed yeah because he Holy writes shit. if you ever see him writing he's writing like this i've honestly I, never noticed lefty, him right <laughs> all, le- all lefties write like that because like in school like you have to go around the binder yeah. Like, I always used to write like that. I've kind of gotten to where I do this, but I don't even know where I was at with what I was saying. But Talking about the fix. Oh, yeah. Uh, they talk about, like, everyday sh- problems with life, but they were talking about, like, the pay gap and stuff, like, mm-hmm. who gets paid the most. And they, like, did a whole chart, and everybody and everybody thought it ended with, like, the white dude, and then it, like, went up to, like, Asians mm-hmm. and things like that. It was interesting to see, you know, they were kind of talking about like that, like, yeah, like... Yeah, I think it's white America, but it's Asian America. Like they're, they're doing work up here. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't say nothing. They just work. Their yeah, ass they off. just they put their head down and go to work. They don't brag about it. They nope, don't complain. Nope, go home <laughs> to the mansion. Yep, that's cool though. That is cool. Get your money. Yeah, yeah. They they get they get a lot of money from guys like Robert Kraft, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I that forgot shit, about that. Already. That shit's crazy. They were. I saw something that was like he's not even the most high profile name involved. Like they have more. They have more names to reveal. Yeah, it was like a like a three month long sting or something. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's funny. He was at a he was at a birthday party yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't even care. Really? Yeah, he was just. Chill. He didn't get like a a warrant or anything. I don't think so, bro. He was, Damn. I forgot. Uh, I forgot whose birthday party he was at. But he went to a birthday party yesterday, like a A list celebrity birthday party. Mm-hmm. Just hanging out like nothing happened. That's the thing that that's what interests me, like the whole feminist movement where they're like, uh, you know, we support sex workers type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So does that mean they support Robert Kraft as well? Like, is that is he a misogynist or is he like a hero? Like, I don't <laughs> see. That's interesting. Where Like, there's so many gray areas, man. It's all gray areas. All gray areas. I, don't know. I just I, that's just that's interesting because uh, he's a billionaire, you know. Yeah, so like he's over here getting jerked off for seventy bucks. Yeah, on Asian massage just, parlor. A, just a regular old massage parlor. Like you could just probably go find an eighteen year old girl and be like, "Hey, I got shit, six tr- six billion in the bank. Shit, want to go Trump, back to my mansion? Okay, Trump got Stormy Daniels. Yeah, it's <laughs> not a good porn star, but he got yeah, sure. I Ti- mean, an expensive one. Tiger Woods had some good ones. Oh, that man. guy, <laughs> Tiger. He had a long list. Man, <laughs> <laughs> the thing was, was I. His wife was so attractive, it was just like, damn, dude. Yeah, that is crazy. It was like, damn. The Stormy Daniels thing is funny because, like, she came out and tried to get all this money from him, you know, like extra money, even after he paid her off. And then I know. it and came like, back to bite her in the ass. Cause, but yeah, because she, like, broke the non disclosure. Like, yeah. The reason she got money in the first place was, like, non disclosure. Like, it? her lawyer got screwed and now she owes Trump money. Like, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know how that worked out, but she owes him money. It's because Trump's a master businessman. He really is. He's He knows what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, she came after him. Like, whenever she did come after him, I was like, oh, you are not powerful enough. Like, he's going to yeah. find some way to flip this. Like, that's what the he thing, does. The thing man. is, is, like, this dude's almost bulletproof. Like, there was a grab by the pussy video. Dude. There was a... And he's the president. Porn stars came out. And like, he's the president. <laughs> yeah. And still did. That was all before the presidency. Right? He shakes off everything. Oh, my god! He's got superpowers, man. Right, I don't know. Right, though? <laughs> like, really, though? It's like, what the like, heck? Like, everything that's happened to him would have ruined any other politician's career. But he's I know. Like, eh, I'm Trump. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck <Really>? it. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It's, it's crazy now because, like, he's changed the game on how I think about a president, like, yeah. on how to get to that office. Mm-hmm. Like, he's totally changed my mindset on, mm-hmm. like, not necessarily respect for the office, but just, like, getting there is just mm-hmm. like, well, Trump did it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, he's he's the... <laughs> He's the personification of the American dream. <laughs> For real, though. It's like, holy shit. For real, this though. This really happened. He came from The Apprentice all the way. 
Like, dude started on reality TV, and now he's the president. Like, that's American as shit. Yeah, we can't ever have a normal president again. <laughs> no, I know. Like, <laughs> Oprah's got to be the next one. Like, Arnold Schwarzenegger's son or something. Like, oh I don't my know. gosh, man. That is, Arnold Schwarzenegger can't be the president because he wasn't born here, right? He was born in Austria. I don't know. He got some sort of that vaccine. I think you can be a U.S. citizen for a certain amount of time. I could be wrong, though. No, you probably do have natural born. I think you have to have a birth certificate here because that was a big thing with Obama. They were like, he wasn't born here. That was a big thing with Ted Cruz as well because he was was born in Canada, but it was on a military base. So, Uh, like, technically he can run for president. Wiz Khalifa, I'm pretty sure Wiz Khalifa was born in Germany, right? Germany, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I think he spent a lot of his days in South Dakota. Really? Yeah. I think nice. like when you ask like where he's from, I think it's like Brisbane, South Dakota, I think, or something like that. Pittsburgh. But then like he did <laughs> he did like high school and stuff in Pittsburgh. Nice. Which I agree with. Like high school shapes you a lot to like who you grow up to be, I feel like. That's true. Not, not I wouldn't say high school itself, but just like those years, like mm-hmm. teenage years. It has a yeah. lot to do with it. Absolutely. Absolute. So Yeah. Shout out Abso, we got a song coming out. So who are you voting for in 2020? <laughs> Shit, man. I've never even voted. I think I think Trump's going to get reelected. It's just inevitable because the last two presidents served two terms. I think I forgot what the statistic was, but like most presidents who run for two terms win. Yeah, statistically speaking. See, I when it, politics. I don't even. I don't do enough studying to even really comment on it a bunch. Mm-hmm. But it's like my biggest problem with politics is I'm like. Fifty percent a Democrat, fifty percent a Republican. So what do you call me? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think I think Democrats are way too far over here, and Republicans are way too far over here. Because like oh, I'm yeah. like in the middle. Like I, I most, like I like things from both ways. I think like, most people are. Yeah, it's like I I like things from both ways. It doesn't have to. It's I don't know. People use it like it's just like the Eagles fans like mm-hmm. go Eagles no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like it's like nah man. Like there's wrong and right everywhere. Like. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm stuck in the middle. So, like, when people start talking politics, it's like, man, please don't. Cause, like, I'm gonna, like, disagree and agree with, if I disagree with certain things, you're gonna be like, oh, you're a liberal, you're a leftist, mm-hmm. or whatever they say. Like, I don't yeah. know what the difference is between all that, but it's like, no, I'm not. I'm not anything you're gonna call me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just, every individual situation, I have an opinion on it. And yeah, I don't that's, look that's to. That's how it should be. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's, there's so many gray areas, man. There's everything's a gray area. Nothing's like just like right yeah. down the middle. Jump on this side or that side. Like that's like that's like saying like this team needs to win the football game and nobody mm-hmm. else. And it's like nah, this ain't a game. Like there's yeah. situations that have individual um, instances that have different interpretations of how that should be presented. Like for sure. Oh, and then uh, I, I had a guy on Tyler Valentine. He's a local comedian, but he was saying that uh, we should just vote for individuals. Like we shouldn't even no parties. Yeah, man. no political yes. parties. Just like who do you agree with the most? Exactly. I hate this team shit, mm-hmm. bro. I but, hate it. But then again, should we really be relying on just one person? That's, That's another thing. Does it become a dictatorship <laughs> after that? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not because we have checks and balances, but still. But it's like maybe we should have three or four or five. I don't know. Man, because, like, <laughs> think if Trump was just on his own, no party ties. <laughs> I feel like he that's pretty much what he did. Yeah, like, pretty he, much. He wasn't Republican. His whole life pretty he much. was a Democrat. I, th- I think, honestly, that's part of the reason he probably got voted in is just because, like, people probably think like I do, and they were like, oh, he's not a politician. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they they voted for him that way. Like, I'm not a... I'm not a Trump fan by any means, but, like, the, the part of him not being a career mm-hmm. politician, I mean, that... Yeah. I like that. I don't want to vote for another politician. Like the CEO, man. Of, like it's weird. The CEO of Starbucks is running for president. I just want to vote for him. Just are you like, serious? Yeah, I just want to vote for him because he's like he made his money outside of politics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like he he earned his money. He doesn't have like he big industry yeah. friends that like he didn't have to suck anyone's dick. Like there's there's <laughs> no there's no lobbyist on his payroll. Like, exactly. Yeah. So it's like I automatically trust him more than Bernie Sanders. You know. Totally. <laughs> totally, man. Yeah, Bernie's out there, bro. Fuck. I like I I told I was telling Alexa the other day I was like. I don't know a lot about Bernie Sanders. I was like, I know I like his intentions, but some of the drastic stuff he's yeah, proposing. I'm insane. like, dude, you're out there, bro. What are you talking <laughs> about, bro? You're out there. <laughs> but that's what's funny is like a lot of people, like if you heard me talk about most subjects, like a lot of people would think like, oh, I'm a Democrat. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, I'm not. Like, 
I think most of those dudes are quacks. Like, but just like the other side, I think a lot of those dudes are quacks too. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. I thought I was libertarian for a little bit. I don't even know. See, but I don't then even I know just what that's about libertarian. It's just like a limit small government. That's that's what I thought Republican was, but they're not. Um, yeah, libertarian is just like do whatever you want. As long as you don't kill anybody, it's pretty. <laughs> that's, that's the way I view libertarian. Like, shoot your gun, snort your cocaine, have a good time. Just don't fucking don't end lives. Yeah, <laughs> it mind was your a, own business. What was the What was the last dude that ran in like an extra party? Gary Johnson was that what you're talking about? <laughs> the dude that fell over, acted like he had a heart attack from smoking weed. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny to me. They they criticized that guy because they asked him about the the capital of Syria, Aleppo. They're like, "What would you do about Aleppo?" And he was like, "What is Aleppo?" <laughs> and everyone was talking shit. It was like, "I don't know what Aleppo was either. I can't be that mad." <laughs> That's a, but see, would you rather have him sit up there and try to give you a political answer and dodge it around? That's like, a good point. No, I'd yeah. rather him be like, "What's that?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You may not need to be president, but I'm glad you were honest with me. I trust yeah, you. That's, that's a much better answer. I trust you. But that's another thing people don't realize either. They're like, the same guy you want to go out to eat with you doesn't mean he should be the president. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like he's got to understand some stuff. Yeah. I, I, only thing I saw about Gary Jones was him falling out of that chair, and I loved him ever since. That was hilarious. That was so funny. They're talking about uh, they're talking about it, it weed says, causes heart attacks. Yeah, it said weed <laughs> causes heart attacks, and he falls out of his chair. It's just like. Hey, I'm a smoker. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think uh, like I like the idea of libertarians, but I feel like they don't really stand for anything. Yeah, like, they're not powerful enough because they don't they don't take a hard stance on anything. They're just like, well, wow, whatever. Like, well, whatever you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think on this? So what do like, you think? <laughs> there's, there's never going to be a libertarian president because they don't have any principles. It's just like, yeah, whatever, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> you got you guys do your thing. If you mess up, you're grounded. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make rules after you fuck up. <laughs> we'll start. <laughs> We'll shape our government around tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> but they are uh they are like against like any type of foreign intervention. So that would be mm. I think that'd be a good thing. But then also like if another Holocaust happened, we'd have to be like Oh, we didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah and another thing is if like we don't intervene with other people, are they gonna help us out when we need them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or do we need help? I don't even know. See that's why yeah. I hate getting in on politics because it's like I'll, I can sit here and talk about my opinion. Everybody has an opinion yeah. on it because they've seen it like in their phones. But it's like I don't even know anything about policy. Mm-hmm. I don't know any. You know, like yeah. I do my own taxes. I don't know anything about like actual taxes. You know, I what feel I mean? like whatever whatever's going on on the other side of the world, America has its hand in it. Yeah, yeah. With, whether it's in a war, that's or, true, or an election, that's true. Just or like whatever. My, just yeah. like Jesse, he was stationed in Germany. Like, what are you doing over there, bro? <laughs> what are we doing? In yeah, Germany? we got bases in every country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He that's... was in like Romania for a little bit. Like, yeah. It's just like, why are you in Romania? Oh, this is where they stationed me. It's like, yeah, but what do you do? What do you do every day, bro? I don't do anything. I just wait until they tell me to take a truck somewhere, and I take that truck somewhere. I'm like, this is crazy. That's funny. No, that's what's crazy is North Korea tries to buck up to us, and like. Dude, we can shoot you from Japan. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you realize this, bro. We're like 50 miles away. And North Korea <laughs> drops a new news headline like, we can hit California now. <laughs> Finally. It's like, we've been able to hit you for 70 <laughs> years. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching. <laughs> I forgot uh, I forgot who it was. Homeland Security or somebody like North Korea threatened to shoot a missile. And somebody said, shoot it. <laughs> we'll shoot it down. <laughs> we'll just bomb that shit. I was just like, damn, we must really have some defense in place so we're not really worried about these That's dudes. what's crazy. Like, how much how much shit do we have that we don't talk about? That's what always Okay, so mind. my phone can recognize my face and unlock <laughs> my phone. So what is, like, if I if I have access to that, yeah. then what's going on what I don't know about? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we have, we have little missiles right now that are ten times stronger than what we dropped on Hiroshima. And they're the little ones. Yeah, that's not even our biggest thing. That shit is crazy. Like, we might drop a bomb and destroy ourselves, you know? Like <laughs> Just to say we won. <laughs> there goes planet Earth. <laughs> Just to say we won. <laughs> hey, man. Shoot off, shoot off some uh, ships into Mars. Hopefully we make it. Americans are competitive. Restart civilization. <laughs> we can play Wally. <laughs> I'll be one of the fat people up in space. It'd be interesting. I'd miss my bones, but, you know. Yeah, but. It's for the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> what, what good are bones if you just break them? 
I had a buddy that broke his arm the other day, like broke it in half, like snowboarding. Oh. Then he was having his first surgery and he was like, dude, I'm nervous. I was like, dude, you're going to go to sleep and not even know what happened. You'll be good. Was it a clean break? Yeah. Like, but I th- it broke like, like kind of weird, like kind of like that mm-hmm. and kind of shifted. So like the surgery was kind of hard to. Ooh. I guess the surgery went longer than it was supposed to, but but he's good. He's good. He ain't going to be snowboarding this year. That's crazy. Our bones can just rebuild themselves. Nuts. Nuts, man. Right? Like, but that's what's cool about, I, sh- I talked to you about that Planet Earth thing with Will Smith. It's not called Planet Earth, but it's called a weird rock, strange rock or something. But, like, he was talking about how, like, the Earth is, like, our body, too. Like, yeah, the ozone layer has, like, holes in it, but he's, like, it repairs itself. Mm-hmm. Like, when we when we make a little change, like, the, it'll heal itself. Like, mm-hmm. we're not just doomed forever. That's beautiful. Yeah. I thought it was so cool. He yeah. was, like, the Earth is, like, an organism. And I was, like, yeah, duh. We came like, from the Earth. Yeah. Exactly. Dust. It's so cool. Dirt. It's so cool. You got to watch that show. It's It's really neat. Yeah. It makes me want to do mushrooms. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> wait till you see the show they shot like the energy comes from the water to the trees and it just looks like some trippy shit yeah life's a trip man yeah man absolutely well uh, so i thought we were going to talk about more about music but we ventured off into that's that's my fault man it's, no it's not your fault i think I, that's the whole point of this podcast is Hell just yeah. let things flow that's what i like about your podcast yeah. like i'll listen to them and i'll just put them on if i'm like doing something random mm-hmm. like a lot of times if i end up playing the video game like i'll put your podcast on and like just all the conversation like we're all humans we have the same thoughts like mm-hmm. different subjects come up and somebody will have an opinion on it it's just kind of like uh i don't know about that or you're like oh yeah yeah I fuck with that. I love just random conversation. That's why I'm, that's why it's easy for me to get off track. <laughs> I wanted to come up here and talk about music all day too, but it's just like sometimes it's nice to not think about music all day. That's I love fair. I love music, but like I said, you gotta cleanse the mind a little bit. Cleanse I've been, the I've been pushing. I've been pushing hella hard. That's good though. Just trying to make new shit. Hell yeah! You I, got you got anything in the in the funnel, dude? I got like. I got so many songs that just won't come out. Dope. But like someday I'll go in there and I'll be in a good mood and I'll listen to mm-hmm. a song and be like, oh, this needs to come out. I'll post it. Bro, I got to show you this beat uh, Talon Duncan sent me. Word. It's only in my text, so I can't play it over the podcast. Hell yeah. I'll, I'll show you after we close up because it's super dope. Hell yeah. It's yeah, like show a, it to me. I don't know how you would describe it. It's kind of like, it's like a hip hop beat, mm-hmm. but it has like uh Yeah, his are different. It has like a house music influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've you know, heard like, a lot of that in his, yeah. like I, I follow him on Instagram, like on Ceaseless Productions, and I always kind of look at those beats. They're all different. I like different. Yeah, this shit's really impressed me lately. Talents, he's a, that's a talented dude. Yeah, I'm trying to have him on, I think two or three weeks maybe. Word. I think I'm gonna. Yeah, have like, you said you said a couple of podcasts ago that you were about to have him on. Did y'all reschedule? Yeah, he had to reschedule. He had to go play drums and Dumas. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, because I I was actually looking forward to that one. I think Talon's cool as shit. Yeah, dude. The first episode I had him on, we got like super deep about spirituality and everything. Yeah, and yeah. It was just like that guy was probably one of my favorite podcasts. Hell yeah. So I've, I've dude, been Talon's an interesting dude. On. I've all, I've always been a big fan of Talon. We've never been like super tight friends, but like. I've always had mad respect for dude, especially because of his sticks, man. Yeah. I mean, he's good at everything he does. I know. It's crazy. I know. He's Yo. the white Gambino. Yeah, man. He's good, bro. <laughs> I'd love to work with Talon. I'd love to work yeah, with Talon. Yeah. I'm he try- just, uh, he shot Kyle Gore's music video. It's it's not out yet, but I saw a preview of it. That's another thing, man. Videos. I want to get into some videos. I'm going to start doing some get videos. Get some videos. Cause like, especially because like, I'm about the words. It's really yeah. easy to portray your words with visuals. Mm-hmm. I need visuals. Honestly, even just like a cool background with the lyric video. Totally. Those are dope. Yeah, man. Like, and that's what, like, almost like a sing along type thing. But like, if I could, I think if I put my lyrics on a page, I think there's a lot of bars I have that people don't get. Like, that people don't understand. They're like, oh, I hate that bar. And it's like, I know, you, I listen to my music. I'm like, I know people won't get that. And I know oh, yeah. that's going to turn them off to that song. But if they get what I was saying, mm-hmm. like. Have you put any lyrics on Rap Genius? because i've seen uh local rappers do that you can do that yeah bro i was just i was just researching the other day like how do you get your stuff on rap genius you know how they do the rhyme schemes mm-hmm. that's a big thing with mine that's just so i dope. want i want somebody to highlight my rhyme schemes because like i, that's I love watching I'm andre 3000s rhyme schemes. yeah i saw one on instagram the other day it was nuts <sighs> it's like being like an engineer man i want to see i want to do a couple of my songs like that because like that's i take a lot of pride in like my rhyme I, schemes. i love going to rap genius like, yeah i don't listen 
Unfortunately, I don't listen to music like I used to. So just because podcasts anybody, taking over my life. Anybody can put stuff on, like. Yeah, it's like a, it's like Wikipedia, basically. Like you can just be, you log in, you can become you a contributor. Can you do the rhyme scheme, dude? Like with the colors. I don't know how to. I don't know how you do that exactly. Man, I think you've got to get an interview. Probably. But all these <laughs> all these whack ass dudes have gotten interviews, so you can get it. Yeah, they do, fucking, do. They do interview anybody. Yeah, it's like this dude named Kid Boo. Oh, Kid Boo. Who, he's popping right now, though, dude. Who apparently he can't stand him. Apparently, he sexually assaulted a child. Oh, and now I don't he, even know. he changed his identity. Oh, he's a clone. And he's actually like thirty-five. He's a clone. Is he's what pretending he says. to be twenty. He's stupid, man. He does <laughs> he does anything for a headline. He's stupid, but he's like popping now just because like he said he cloned himself. He did mm-hmm. some crazy video, and then he started dating Black China, and then anybody that dates Black China gets in the headlines. So that's so weird. I know. I uh, I actually listened to one of his songs and I couldn't get it out of my head for like two weeks. He's like pop up perk like my back hurt. Man, uh, so Fuck like you heard of nav. Hurt. <laughs> and it's not even clever. It's not even <laughs> perk like my back hurt. He just he said the same word twice. It was not even a good what bar. That? It's that perk and that back perk, hurt. Perk, like my back. Hurt. It's just our brains, perk, man. We like hurt. certain stuff. <laughs> like I know, man. There's some <laughs> catchy songs that I hate. Like if you heard Blueface lately. Yeah, I couldn't stand Bust Buddy. Down, dot, yeah. I couldn't stand Buddy, but all I do is sing his damn song, and I'm like, his he, voice, it, it like squeaks. He's like, I was sick. Bust oh, down, Bust down. <laughs> Bust down. <laughs> if you've heard him live, it's it's hilarious, dude. I'd love to hear him live. That's hilarious. But man, like you can't hate on dude. Like he found a way to like grab people's attention just being different. Mm-hmm. Like he put the music out there. Like if that came out of my studio, I'd be like, oh no, don't put that out. But yeah. he was like, no, nah, that's raw. Put that out. And it, it made it pop. Like, you never know. Yeah, that's weird. That shit doesn't sound good to me, but it sounds good to a lot of people. He's big right now. As th- I think, I feel like the the bar is low, you know, as far as, <laughs> as far as like, music, musical talent. That's it's what like, that's what's hard for me with do rap. Do you have rap. any face tattoos? <laughs> right, man. And that's what's hard for me with rap right now is, like, I feel like my type of rap isn't very appealing right now. You know what I mean? Like, you, you remember, like, Slug and, like, Atmosphere and stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, they were all yeah. wordy and, like, yeah. Eminem was wordy back in the day. I know I'm talking about white dudes, but, like... Well, like, MF Doom, yeah. he's probably one of the best rappers in the world. And not that many people no know who he is. No recognition. Yeah. No recognition. Exactly. Hobson. Hobson's Hobson, crazy. Absolutely. Hobson's crazy good. Like, you have guys... Most... Like, a lot of times, lyrical guys don't make it to the top. The only time they do is when they're, like, Kendrick and J. Cole mm-hmm. and, and their music and their presentations mm-hmm. on point as well. I mean... It's when you put those two worlds together, yeah. I feel I like. I mean, you could say Tech Nine's famous, but he's still not that big. No, and he's amazing. He's still not that big. And he's ama- He's incredible. Absolutely. But, like, in the, but I mean, Logic, I see him as a lyrical rapper, but I think where he popped off was, the like, the white people. Like, the white yeah, people. Yeah, Logic, like, he kind of, I don't want to say he sold out, but he, he pandered. He did, man. He pandered his ass off. <laughs> yeah, he did, man. And it's like, I guess get it how you can, but, like, yeah, bro. Like... I don't know. There's, there's diff. I feel like everybody's got a different come up, but like when you're like a lyrical guy and you're not big on the like the twerking music right now, mm-hmm. like it's hard. Like best, like ever since the beginning of hip hop, the best way to get your music out was to give it to a DJ. He mm-hmm. spins it in the club. People ask, oh, I've been hearing this song in Amarillo. I've been hearing this song in Austin. I've been hearing this song in Dallas. Cause like I know Austin DJs and some Dallas DJs uh-huh. that like I have a contact open with them where I can send them music, but I haven't made a club record where I want to f- send them a song. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a club guy. So it's like, I, do I sit there and force myself to make a club record to get my name out of there? Or like, do I just keep making music I like to make? I think you just keep making music yeah, you like, man. Like I, Stay I've, true to yourself. Trust me, I've been in the studio like trying to make that little hit, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, what am I doing? Like, mm-hmm. This is like trying to get the last drop of ketchup out of the bottle. Just go get a new bottle. Yeah, it's like... like you're not being yourself. That's exactly. Really... And then the music's not as good. Like yeah. music come like just like Letter of the God, like that thing happened in a day just because of shit that had happened to me mm-hmm. two hours before that. Like I got in the studio and like everything that had happened to me before that, like went into that song and it came out to a song that I really liked. Mm-hmm. Like I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed top to bottom writing it and everything. And mm-hmm. it's just like when it doesn't happen like that, it's usually not gonna be a good project. It's I, not gonna be good art. And I feel like the not not all club records, but when you make when you go and you make club records, you're not not being yourself no you know and you go and listen to these rappers and they're just like my life's so extravagant i have the best life ever i have so much money i used to have less money but now i have all the money ever yeah it's like i don't I, and it's i it's, can't relate to that i don't want to hear that same, shit it's the same idea repeated over and over yeah. and over that's like that's that's rick ross's whole career yeah 
And he stole his name from an actual Rick Ross. Freeway, man. <laughs> Freeway Ricky just, Ross, man. I just listened to a podcast with Freeway Rick Ross. Freeway Ricky Ross, He's man. way more interesting because he actually sold drugs. Bro, I watched, a, I watched a documentary on him. <laughs> that shit was intense. That dude had... He was running the place in Florida, bro. Yeah, he was. He's he made billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just from selling drugs and chopping cars. Yeah, man. And, and he's, that's he's in, highly intelligent. He learned I, to yeah, read I was about in, to say, I don't care jail. what anybody says. That takes some brain power. That yeah. takes someone that's very smart. That's an entrepreneur. We yes. don't we don't recognize them as entrepreneurs. No, but that's that's that is entrepreneur at its finest that's some of the best entrepreneurs like el chapo Mm -hmm. escobar those guys like those are some of the best minds like business wise that have been on the planet but it's just we don't recognize it because of the taboo against it uh, yeah like imagine if el chapo sold herbal life you know (laughs) (laughs) kill the game (laughs) top herbal life salesman of the world (laughs) all the cartels are drinking shakes it's incredible Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's the thing. That's El Chapo like Herbalife representative. That's the that's the entrepreneurial mindset. I, you can apply it to anything. Exactly, you know, you'll dominate. Exactly, and that's like that's like, like I said. Like we, me and you, we both talk about how we're stuck in like this vibe all day, where we think that's is all we think about. And I'm sometimes I'm kind of like, man, am I going crazy? But then there's like, like I said, there's another side of me that's like, man, I'm really happy that I'm the type of person that has some drive to me because I know a lot Absolutely. of people that don't have that. Yeah, and that's And sad. they're just, they're literally, they're, like, they're 25 years old and they're acting like they're 35. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, I saw an interview the other day, I forgot who it was, but Buddy said, what would you tell your 30-year-old self? He was 40. I forgot, who was it? I don't even remember. But he was like, I would tell my 30-year-old self that 30 is young as shit. You're in your prime when you're mm-hmm. in your 30 because you're a grown man now, but you still got that kid heart. Like mm-hmm. He was like 30. Like people, yeah. A lot of times at 30, people are like, okay, I'm done. I better start yeah. settling down. They're like, nah, man, go hard in your 30s. Mm-hmm. Like 20s get you ready for the 30s, and then you go hard. Look at Jayco. He's what, 30, yeah. 35? Mm-hmm. I don't even know. Like J. Cole's in his 30s, like, yeah. and, but bro, you would never know. Like, you yeah. would never know. And a lot of with stand up and music as well, like 2 Chains, he didn't get big till he was in his 30s, maybe 40s. Bro, 2 Chains has had the longest road to the top. Mm-hmm. The longest road. Sometimes you don't get noticed until you're 45. But it, but it was what he wanted to do. Like, most people, like, they do it, doesn't work for four years, and they're like, oh, I'm not good mm-hmm. enough. That's the two, thing. 2 Chains was just going, titty boy, titty boy, titty boy. And mm-hmm. then he had a manager that was like, man, let's, let's rebrand. Rebranded, like, still didn't pop off. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I think, like, his second 2 Chains album, I think everybody was like, okay. True Religion. True, reli- True Religion, yeah. because that's, rem- that's the first time I heard him. Me too. Uh, because Wiz plugged him on Twitter. I'll never forget. I was at Thai Kitchen. I saw a tweet that said, True Religion, he was pissing in the urinal right there. I'm riding around and I'm uh, getting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I remember. That was it's fr- mine. I spent it. It was crazy because I was like, this is the first time I've heard 2 Chains. It wasn't the first time we heard 2 Chains. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 knew, we heard we, Titty Boy. We yeah, we know heard who he Titty was. Boy. We just didn't hear 2 Chains. <laughs> yeah, that's what blew my mind, That too. was the same thing with Currency. Like, I heard Currency, currency on, on the when, Carter. When Carter he was Young Money. Yeah, he was signed with Young Money. Yeah, I, I didn't know he was Currency until yeah, 10 man. years He's later. He's a New, York, New Orleans <laughs> guy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. That's that's a dude who didn't have to make a club record. That dude. Exactly. And he's he done makes his own music thing. all the yeah. time. He that's drops like, more music than anyone. He He's a dude who's just a fluid artist. That's what he is. That's what he does. Like, he he don't want to be yeah. A-list. If he if it happens, he'd be like, oh, yeah. cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be like, yeah. He don't give a shit. Yeah, but it's just like when you're passionate about someone, that's just your life. Like, who who said Drake was at the Grammys the other day and, like, People hate on Drake, but Buddy said, he said, man, if you got one person that knows every word to your mm-hmm. song, like, it's worth making some music. Absolutely. Like, that's, that's such real. That's that real was, shit. People were making fun of him for that speech, and I was like, man, that hit home with me. Mm-hmm. Like, that hit home with me. You got you got a handful of people. Like, even my homies, like, they, lo- they play the shit out of my music, and they mm-hmm. love it. They say they do. But them playing it and, like, them knowing the words that I sat there and harbored over for a long yeah. time, them saying those words that took me a long time to create, it's like, oh, that's, that's dope. Badass, yeah. It makes you feel good. Like, I love that shit. Yeah, stay true to yourself. Because I feel like the guys who go out and make the club records, they don't have the longevity. I feel like longevity is yeah. just from being yourself and doing look what at, you love. Look at Kendrick and J. Cole. They're old, yeah. and they're still, like, you call them A-list rappers. Like, who has the most club records right now? Maybe Tyga? I don't give a shit about Tiger. Yeah, like, exactly, <laughs> exactly, bro. And like you, like people, like the young kids love Lil Pump, but just like J Cole said, in 1985, um, he was like, uh, 
the kids that are jamming you right now are going to grow up mm -hmm. and stop doing all the shit that made you blow up. Yeah. And it's like, that's so true. Like, mm -hmm. you got to have some depth and some, like, you got to be more, um, not complicated, but just like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to have a little more depth than what you're yeah. thinking about. You can't just make money. You can't make songs about money, cars, and hoes you your to whole life. To talk you got to have some substance. Because like, yeah. when your fans grow up, you got to grow up with your fans. Absolutely. That's why I love Mac. Like, I knew Mac way back in yeah. kids. And kids, like, he was he was still on some mid, eh, chill Mac shit. But it was on some child. It was kind of childish. Mm -hmm. Like, but it yeah. fit. I was childish. It fit yeah. me. I grew up with him, like, all the way to swimming. And it's like, he was, like, growing up as I was growing up. And it was like... Like yeah. R.I.P. Mac Miller because it's like that's a dude that grew. He had substance even mm -hmm. when his shit was childish. Yeah, he grew up with. He was like a year older than me. Yeah, he grew up with us. Yeah, same man. With, he's, same with Tyler the Creator. Yeah, Tyler the Creator grew up with us. Like, and now, like, think about how, how, like, uh, as a creative, what we think of him now compared to what I thought of him like Goblin. Yeah, at Goblin, like you know, people call him horrorcore rap mm -hmm. and like that. That now he's like, I don't know if I'm gonna see you again. <laughs> It's crazy, man. Like those are talented people, and like like you said, that's longevity. That's mm -hmm. longevity. When you, I feel like it takes an intelligent person to have longevity because you gotta you gotta be able to feel all the way what you're talking about. Yeah. You gotta be able to feel that because nobody's gonna feel you unless you feel what you're saying. Like, yeah. so if I'm in there and I'm trying to make a record about ass and titties and big booty bitches, like I'm not around that <laughs> at all. Like, yeah, I got a chick I'm probably gonna marry. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like that's not my life so why would i make that record yeah. like my life are the things that i talk about like and i can that's what i that's that's what i like i go and listen to my library and listen to my music that's one thing i'm proud of like there's no bars that i listen to even like even like some of the gun talk and shit like some of the rap talk like it's like that shit i've been through like that shit like shit i'm talking yeah. about is like actually things that i've been around and been through yeah. like that's what I'm proud of is it's not it's no fake rap shit. Yeah, you can tell when someone's putting on a front. Yeah, yeah, and nobody's going to feel that. Like yeah. nobody's ever going to feel that and like especially nowadays there's so many rappers trying to be a rapper. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a rapper like I am a rapper. I yeah. do rap. That's most what of, I do. Most of it's most of it's like putting on a fake lifestyle. Yeah, it's hoping to get rich. It's a get rich quick screen mm -hmm. scheme is all it is for people. Absolutely. It's get rich quick and it's just like for me, yeah, hell yeah, I want to be rich off of this that but that's so I wake up in the morning coming to do a podcast or an interview or go to studio time or have a show that night, have a tour. Like that's why I want to get rich. Cause I want mm. it to be, I want it to be my whole life. I don't want it to be after five o'clock. You For know sure. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, man. I'm oh, freaking, yeah. I'm just, I'm happy to do podcasts like this just because like, I know we didn't talk about music a whole bunch, but like <laughs> I'm sitting here, I get to come see Matt and it's like, you yeah. get to kick it. And it's like, we get to talk about music and I feel like this is like, doing something good for my music especially getting stuff off my chest because i ain't gonna have these conversations with alexa because she'd get bored as hell it's like i appreciate you doing like the local artists and shit oh yeah i appreciate you coming through and making time for me hell oh, yeah you're a busy bro. man hell yeah i'm not busy but i'm just a, her a hermit when it comes to the music yeah <laughs> sometimes you gotta be a hermit yes sir we can go ahead and wrap it up i gotta pee really bad cool um you want to plug anything just repost this on your soundcloud if you Word. want to get your fans yeah to just go check me out on soundcloud uh it. soundcloud backslash jizzy dank uh go follow me on instagram and twitter too because i have no followers y'all go follow me if you don't follow me uh it's black it's at underscore black sheep underscore but black sheep the b is a three so yeah that caught me off guard you changed that recently right yeah i did okay. i did but now like when you search black like i used to search black sheep and you get about a million results yeah now if you search black sheep with the three is the b like it really did a number on the search oh, yeah. bar. You can find me now. I'm discoverable in this big world of black sheep. Three lakh sheep. Three lakh sheep. <laughs> it's I, like six lakh. Yeah, I like the three better than the six. <laughs> yeah, to totally. Honest. It makes more sense to me. <laughs> yeah. It makes more sense to me. It makes more sense. But yeah, go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Um, if you don't, whatever. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> that reminded me. I, 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 I always reference podcasts, but I was listening to Michael Bisping, and he was like, uh, you know, go find me on on uh this platform you can see me here you can see me there and uh if you like me thank you if you don't go fuck yourself yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was how we ended the pot and i was like that's such a gangster way to put hell that yeah shit. Like, hell yeah it's just like hey man if you don't like me i'm not gonna make you like <laughs> just go on with your life <laughs> hell yeah all right thank you for listening everybody have a good day peace
seen it all because just how the shirt fit I'll express my feelings and I wonder if it's worth it Burden with the dreams and now it seems that's how you hurt me Made me want some things I can see I don't deserve it Made me make the changes, did some things to keep it working Drowning in the flames, I'm trying to think of how to word it Devil on my brain and I can never seem to curb it You know that I'm selfish cause I think of me a lot Always wanna help but people see me as a snob Focused on my wealth but I was greedy from the start How do I excel if you ain't leaning on my heart? Wanna leave my shell, wanna get up on the road Would that put me in hell? Need you hooked to my soul Wanna look for myself, did I look too low? Put a wish in a well, wanna swish or a bow I'm a fiend for the drove, I'm a fool for the shot Would you love me if I'm sober? Would you love me if I'm not? Manic depressive with no pharmaceutical rocks Affected by the truth, that ain't what we tie. So if you know my heart, then you know this where I'm at. I would love to take my wings if you'd agree to take me 